Every evening at eight, you can hear him arrive. He stands six feet tall, weighs 285, Big Bob. Big Bob. Big Bad Bob. 1395, Adelaide's 5AA with Bob Francis. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the entertainment capital of Talkback Radio in the world. And this is the last time, well, this is the fourth to last time you'll hear that jingle from Johnny Blake. Good old Johnny. I wish he'd come back to work here at the station. He's fantastic. 8223 is my telephone number. The board is full. This is my last night forever, forever on the air after 57 years. And Andrew's just brought in a big bouquet of flowers. They are. Oh, is that from you, dear? That's that's for you, darling. That's for me. There we go. (laughs) Who's it from? From Rob. Whoever Rob is. Rob! Rob! A boy. A boy. Oh, it must be (laughs) Robert Zulian, a cantus. That's the name of the... And he's written a card here. Use a clean vase. Reach up the stems on each other. Uh, Bob, as... Just just entered the age group that listens to talk back... You decide to call it a day and retire. It's been a pleasure to hear your dulcet tones on the airwaves. I would like to take this opportunity to wish you and Anna all the very best. For you, darling. Anna, very best wishes uh, for this beautiful time in your lives together and the future. Regards, Bob. Well, isn't that lovely? Thank you very much, Bob. Robert Julian from Acanthus. 135 Perry Street in Adelaide. What beautiful flowers. We have some flowers, darling. They're lovely. My wife has joined me in the studio, folks. Where do I put your microphone on? One, two, three, four, five. five. Number five. Hi, darling. Hi, Bob. See? No, hi, darling. Sorry? I'm um, darling. Oh, darling. Hi, darling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and uh, Leith Forrest has joined me in the studio. And I haven't seen Leith, though, who's been producing the breakfast program for so damn long. Good to see you, Leithy. Bob, it's great to be here. I thought I had to come in because I've been on breakfast now for about three months, but for the last nine years we crossed paths as the sports show every finished night. and you started. Every <laughs> night. So We I called s- each other the worst names on earth but met them very nicely. Well, I was going to say that in your message, I can't believe you're <laughs> leaving, but you are. Um, so I said to Jessica, as soon as I get the kids to sleep tonight, that's it. I've got to go in and see Bob because it's the first time I've seen you in months. So. Beautiful. So thanks for letting you me come in. You've got the kids saying The kids did a me. message yeah. for you. How, How old are they? Uh, Bailey's four and Ella is two. Have a listen to this. Here we go. <laughs> Goodbye, Bob. <laughs> so the kids had they been awake would have come in as well. That's they, yeah. lovely, <laughs> and they speak nicely. Have you been teaching Bella Trying, yeah, trying. Bailey's yeah. a kindy, so Ella's a bit advanced, but and you you've know. taken them around the world, haven't you? You've been to New York, seen Mark over there. Which yeah, your son. Good my son. Yeah. Well, the four-year-old's been in America three times, more than most people. You know, how can you take a kid of that age overseas that far? They sleep for most of it, which is good. Really, no ear. ear We're popping. like you know, at Christmas you get one big gift or you get a lot. Yeah. We get the one big one, so we don't go anywhere. We don't go to Melbourne. We don't go to Victor Harbour. We just go to America as much as we can afford it. So you can go and see how it's done. Oh, Correct. L- and your son. <laughs> Correct. So there you go. That's fabulous. Thank you, Lee. Pleasure. Thank Have a great you. night. Thank Congratulations on everything. Thank you, mate. It's uh, eight and a half minutes past eight o'clock. Well, let's start with the phone calls tonight, folks. As I said, this is my last night. The board is absolutely jam-packed full. Uh, if you're a real good friend, you really know me really well and you really want to get on the air, you call 8223 That's the competition number and you might get on. OK, hello. Hello, Tommy. Hello, Bob. I didn't know that you said Tom. Tom, Tom I'm really I said. Confused tonight. Yeah, say hello to Anna. She's here too. Hello, Hi, Anna. How are you, darling? I'm a lucky fella to speak to Anna. <laughs> I'm a lucky Wow, <laughs> Bob will sit on my head now for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Anywho. Now, you haven't got bloody ten minutes to talk. You've got one. Exactly. Thank you. Right. <laughs> First off, thanks for all the times, good times we've had together, both on air and the various deals we had, including the um, the time when there was three of us, grumpy Scottish John from Brompton and myself in the studio. Have a good night, with really. That was really yeah. great. And John, Scottish John is on holiday at the moment in New Zealand. I'm sure he'd ask me to give you his best wishes if he were here. Is he playing golf over there? Wasn't he taking some some of his uh, his mates over there to teach? Uh, I'm not sure of the details. I believe he's playing golf and fishing and riding about in a uh, in a combi van or something of that uh, nature. You're, you're not in. Anywho, beyond that, also um, I wanted to thank you for the uh, uh, the time when you were at Seaford doing this book. Books um, signing the session, and it was your book about your life and your program 
But you, uh, not many blokes would have done this. They were man, and, man enough to say to the people in Seaford, "Hey, folks, this was Tommy, Tommy from Seaford," <laughs> and they all they you all. You became took... a star at the Seaford Shopping Centre. I did, and so I really appreciated that because that was your big day. But you shared it with me, John and Bob, and I can't ask for more. Good on you, mate. So I'll, I'll let, let it go at that. I don't think there's anything else except we wish you all the very best. Thank and, you, Tom. It's always it, been a pleasure talking to you, mate. Thank you, my friend. And if you and Anna get tired of on being on your own, I'll come and be a lodger and she can look after me as well. <laughs> Good <laughs> on you, Tommy. Tommy. Thank you, mate. Thank you, Bob. Bye. Bye. Hello, Bobby. It's your illegitimate son, Pembo. As everybody knows, I am the biggest Beatles fan in the world and I have always envied you for not only bringing the Beatles to Adelaide, but for those two historical, life-changing days in June of 1964. You were, people don't know this, you were the closest person to the Beatles. You compared the concerts, you were the only person backstage with them back in the days when you could go backstage with them. That soon ended. You literally touched the hem of John Lennon's garment. And I will never forget, in 2004, on the 40th anniversary of the Beatles tour, there was this huge press conference at the Town Hall. Now, we're all standing out on the balcony where you had presented the Beatles to the biggest crowd they ever saw in their entire career in the world. The biggest crowd ever. So I got so caught up in the moment, I said to you, Bob, I thought about it and I thought, no, I'm going to do it. I said, Bob, I have never told you this before, but I really envy you to have not only been on this balcony, but to have spent two days in the inner sanctum of the greatest band in the history of the world, the Beatles. And I will never forget what you said. You said, Pembo, I could not give a stuff about the Beatles. This press conference is all about me. You are nothing if not brutally, crushingly honest. And 57 years later, on this the last week of your last show, Bob, it's all about you. Congratulations, Bob. 57 years on Adelaide Radio. All the best in your retirement. From 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. Pembo, you're a star. Thank you very much, mate. Twelve and a half minutes past eight o'clock. I'm on the air till midnight tonight, folks. You can talk to me, you can yell at me, you can shout at me. But be nice to me. It's my last night. Forever on the air. It'll just hurt a little. Dare to call. Big Bob Francis. Back again, back again. 15 minutes past 8 o'clock. Hi, Joan. Hi, it's Father Joan here, your oh, spiritual hi, director. Joan. Hello, darling. Anna's, yeah, Anna's, Anna's, Anna's with me. Hi, lovely Anna. Hello, darling. Well, I could cry, but I won't. Well, I just want to say thank you, thank you, Bobby Boy, for... Um, and only you could get away with calling her a woman priest, Father. <laughs> and it's just why like you'll be Big Bob forever. Long time after you're old for radio, I'm going to be Father Joan forever. So we are linked. Do other, do other people call you Father Joan? Only because I heard you do it. Yeah, I know, I understand that. Yeah, but it's a. Uh, yeah, 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 they do. Yeah, yeah they do. Yeah, Joan, and, and, Joanie's the first lady priest in South Australia, and ever since I was there, you can't call her sister, Joan, because. And yet there's brothers all over the place, but you can't. And you do want me to be mother. Uh, no, mother, so. Father, be good enough. <laughs> well, it, it's a wonderful, uh, it's a wonderful turn in the It'll last with me forever. I'm very, very glad I'm going to see something of you in the future. And I just want to finish with that little joke you told this morning. Last night, you said when someone's finished off the radio, they're dead and gone and out of people's minds. And I said, no, no. And you said a little joke about a knock knock. We do that. Yeah. You go. You start. Knock knock. Who's there? Bob. No, you say, see, you've forgotten me already. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> you've buggered it. I go, oh, knock. Do it again. Knock, do it knock, again. knock, knock. Bob. Who's there? Bob. Bob who? You've forgotten me already. <laughs> you got it. That's the bloody joke, you silly bass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a priest, you know, you don't remember these things. Anyway, I'm going to get off the line. Um, my mother, and she died in 1966, this was a while ago, she saw you with the Beatles, because they were actually staying at the South Australia Hotel, when the Beatles were there, and she was came she? and said, we have seen the Beatles, and I was in about year seven at school and then turned and tell us, but she also told me about you. Unbelievable. And little did I know, I'd ever get to know you, let alone love you like I do. Thank so you, love to you, Anna. Have a great night.
You Thank you, Jodie. Bye. Bye, love. Bye. Oh, have a look at this name on the, on the list here, folks. This is a man who was up against me in drive time with the big C little HAS, Chaz Lumsden on KA, and this was Jim Slade at 5DN. He's still alive. You're still alive and well, Jimbo. Absolutely, Bob. <laughs> I never thought the day would come when I'd be talking to you on your last day in radio. Hey, mate, we should, we should have a club for worn-out DJs. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen Chaz Lumsden? Funny you should mention that, mate, because about five weeks ago, I got an email from him and I phoned him. Get off. Uh, it's not quite the same Chaz that we remember, but uh, it's still there. It's still in, there. In what way? What is he? What, what's he uh, like? Now? He's not so over the top as he used to be. Is he? Oh, God, so. oh, mate, Bob, I, Bob, I've got to tell, I've got to tell a little story uh, about you that I think people should know. When I started in radio, which is and, and went out to meet pop stars that came into Adelaide to the Adelaide airport. That was yeah. about, what, 63? Yeah. I was new. I was a new kid on the block. I didn't know anyone there. Bob Francis called me over and introduced me to everybody who mattered at that time. I'm talking about managers and people like that, and that happened about four or five times. And you were so my opposition. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. But, mate, I've never, ever forgotten that, and I've, I've spoken about that many times, and uh, that, that was just something that I thought was terrific. And uh, I thank you for that. <laughs> thank you, Jim. How old are you now, mate? Same age as you. No, I'm about uh, four months older. Are you really? Gosh. Yes, I am. A lot of water's passed on the bridge in 57 years, isn't it, son? You're not wrong, mate. You're not wrong. But uh, you still sound great, Bob. And uh, it's a shame you're going to be lost to the airways. It really is. Well, uh, when I said, and I talked it out with my wife, who's with me in the studio here. Hello, uh, Anna. And, uh, Hi there. And uh, we, I said, I'm going to retire. She said, well, it's up to you. And then yeah. when I came and saw the boss and said, I'm going to retire, that was it, pal. I, I, I'd had enough. I just thought, no, I won't, can't wait till the end of the year. I'm going to do it right now. You've been through a few traumas, mate. And um, I just hope you have a wonderful retirement. I really do. But the traumas have all been part of the learning process, and uh, yeah. you know, I, I still feel great. <laughs> and you're still sounding it too, mate. Thank you, mate. Okay, Bob. Good day, Jimbo. Thank you, pal. Okay, mate. Bye, bye, mate. Bye, bye. Jim Slade. Uh, now, do I talk to Ralph now? Is Ralph on the line? There's not a different Ralph. Oh, well. Oh, OK. Now, we, 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 we've got a special for you, folks. We're crossing live to the Festival Theatre where the big go show is on at the moment. Ross D. Wiley is on stage singing, Here Comes the Star. And uh, as soon as he finishes his song, we shall get in contact with Johnny Young on stage and uh, he'll say g'day. Have I got time to play a commercial or not? Yes, I have. <laughs> Big Bad Bob. Hello, this is Pilko Gowan. Bob's very last night on air after 57 years. There's a million stories you could tell about him, and I'm just trying very hard to think of one that can be told in public. I'll try and keep it to a couple of minutes. It involves a lunch about 15 years ago with uh, Barry Cattle, myself and Bob, and it, it was taking place at the um, nice restaurant in the Botanic Gardens. We had a table that was out on the veranda, so we arrived at 12.31 o'clock and I simply wanted to catch up with Bob. Hadn't seen him for 10 years and in between that time there was a couple of marriages, a second and a third marriage that uh, I'd never heard about. And uh, at the time he was happily married to, to Pam. Now happily married to Anna. Anyway, so we go to lunch, three of us sit down. And I said, Bob, uh, 10 years, I've, uh, I've missed out. What's, uh, tell us about the second and third wives. And so he started talking and I, I said, Bob, shh. You've got to keep it down and not so loud. Uh, yeah, easy on the language. Oh, yeah, sorry, pal. Sorry, pal. So the first bottle of wine and away he goes. And um, Barry Cattle's sitting there uh, and we're both of us laughing because Bob's in great form. And I looked around and the other tables were kind of... had all stopped their conversation and were listening to Bob. Anyway, by about, um, by about two o'clock, we'd finished with the second wife and uh, we'd, uh, he'd moved on to the, uh, to the third wife and uh, with a whole lot of stories in between. And again, I kept saying to him, Bob, 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 keep it down. And, and no language. You, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, Bill, sorry. I looked around. None of the tables had moved. They'd all gone on to their first of their coffees. and But they weren't talking. They were all listening to Bob. And by about four o'clock or so, he's in fine form. And we're on to the third or fourth bottle of red. And, the, and again, I looked around. And lo and behold, these people are still having coffees because they didn't want to leave because they're 
they've been thoroughly entertained. And again, it's always, Bob, keep it down. Shh, shh. And watch your language. Oh, sorry, Bob, sorry, Bob. Anyway, so at the end of the, um, I don't know, 4.35, some of them started to get up and leave. And uh, I said to Bob, I said, you've got to work tonight. Yeah, 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 right. And it had been reasonably successful in as much as it, we managed to keep him nearly under control and there wasn't too much bad language. And uh, those few people who were offended probably got up and left, but the rest of them stayed and listened to the conversation. Time to leave, 4.35. Naturally enough, a cab needs to be taken because Bob's on air that night. And I said to Barry Cattle, can't miss this. Must listen 8 o'clock tonight. This will be a ball terror. This will be not to be missed. As we're walking out, uh, goodbyes are said to everybody and the staff are all still smiling and laughing, having overheard most of the previous two or three hours of conversation. Oh, Tone, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to butt in there. I'll play it again a little bit later on. He, he made the speech today at my final uh, goodbye. It was just the funniest speech on earth. It was beautiful. But I've got to tell you, uh, right now, I'm, we're, we're crossing to the Festival Theatre and my old mate John Young is there. Are you there, John? Wasn't that special? OK, take a seat because I think I've got Bob Francis on the phone. G'day, John. How are you, Bobby? Oh, fabulous. Good to hear you, mate. You're... Well, Rusty Wiley has just finished singing Here Comes the Star for our audience. And it's a packed house here tonight at, at the... Uh, uh, Festival <laughs> Theatre. <laughs> that was so emotional, mate. You know, I wrote that song for Rusty. I know. So we, we've struggled so hard for so long to get him to come on one of our go shows. And everybody loved it, didn't you? Bobby, uh, on behalf of everybody here tonight, we just want to say thank you to you for all of the wonderful, wonderful support that you've given to Australian artists in your illustrious career. We all love you and we all thank you for everything you've done for Australian music. And our friends here in, in our pack theatre just want to say something to you. One, two, three. <laughs> That's a thank you from two and a half thousand people, Bobby. <laughs> what they say? What they say? <laughs> they said thank you, Bob. <laughs> oh, that's great. And that is a very loud sound coming through a mobile phone. But John, I really appreciate that, and I really hope the show goes well for you. I saw the last Go Show, and it was absolutely brilliant. And there's nothing better than hearing the old songs. That's great. Hang on, I'll put you on the microphone. You can say hello to everybody. Hopefully, they can hear you. Here's All right. Francis, everyone. Hello, everybody. Lots of love from everybody here at the Festival Theatre, mate. And, you know, I'm sure we'll be seeing you doing lots of other things. And uh, hopefully maybe next year you can come to the next Go Show. Would you like Bob to come and appear and sing with us? <laughs> That's the date, I, Bob. We'll even pay you. I, I, I do hound, hound Dog in C. He does Hound Dog in C, boys. That's good. <laughs> yes, the boys know that. Bobby, yeah. have a wonderful night. Your last night on radio. Thank and, you, uh, John. And my... We absolutely love you. My... And uh, from all of us, one more time. One, two, three. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby Francis. <laughs> Thank you, John Young. It's fantastic to hear from you. Normie Rowe, all the boys there. There's about 12 or 15. Tony Worsley, would you believe? Uh, Colleen Hewitt. There's just an amazing group of people who are there live at the Festival Theatre tonight at the Go Show. And good luck to them all. Normie Rowe rang me this afternoon. It was great to hear. Get interactive now. Email on air at 5AA.com.au. 1395 Adelaide 5AA. Well, that was fabulous, going live on stage with John Young. Can you imagine that? I've known Johnny Young, and then John Young, and then back to Johnny Young, and he's on stage live with the Norm... Oh, I wish I remembered all the names. Tony Worsley, uh, Colleen Hewitt. Oh, just can't think of it. Normie Rowe rang earlier on. Twenty. That was live, live, direct in the uh, at the uh, uh, Festival Theatre. 29 and a half minutes past 8 o'clock. I cannot believe this. Marnie Morrow has turned up five minutes before time. That's because I love you, Bob. Uh, <laughs> Had to be in here tonight, you, you, didn't I? <laughs> you look flustered. <laughs> no, I don't know why. Well, only because I know that you, you probably didn't know where the hell you were going, you couldn't find a car park, you forgot your <laughs> telephone at home. All uh, those things, normally... all of the above, all of the above. <laughs> that's right. I don't know where we're going to be able to get phones. If anybody wants to talk to Marty Morrow, you might have to use <laughs> the competition line, 8223-0055, uh, if you've got anything wrong on the outside or the inside, 8223-0055, because <laughs> the phones are just bloody jam-packed full of people waiting to 
talk to me about uh, about my illustrious career. But you've had an illustrious career in in Adelaide, man. I've as, had as an illustrious natura- career with you too, Bob. Yeah. We've been on for years and years and years together. Na- naturopath. <laughs> Extraordinary, he used to call me. Well, I still do. Naturopath <laughs> extraordinaire. In, in uh, fact, uh, my, my wife Anna is here in the studio too. And you love her too, don't you, darling? Oh, I adore Marnie. I yeah. think she's just a powerhouse of knowledge. <laughs> Why? Well, she knows all about healing, you know, yeah. and, and not... Uh, and the they help health. people. Yes, you do. Yeah. You're a true healer. <laughs> well, there you are, darling. They all know you and they know who you are. You've been around a long time. Where did you start in Adelaide? Tell us your, your oh, history. Well, I started, first of all, I suppose I was on the ABC and then 5DN and then I came to you and I've been with you ever since. And that's got to be, oh, must be 18 years or more, surely. Easy there. Yeah, easy. he's more, I've been, longer. I've been, I've, been, I've been here 28 years. Well, there so you go, so it's probably over uh, 20 then. Longest staff, oh, not longest staff. Makes us old. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you don't feel old, do you? No, you're about, no, I absolutely I think you're about the same not. age as I am, aren't you? Yeah, I just keep myself yeah. active. But, but coming out of school, did you want to be a herbalist and that? No, what, no. What I was the hell was going botanist. on in those days? Well, botanist first and then nutrition and then that led automatically into, I suppose, herbal medicine because my family, and coming from Europe, most Europeans, uh, you know, they know all about herbal medicine and, yeah. uh, you know, diets and foods and I guess it was the natural way to go. And, of course, when I came to Adelaide, I used to have a clinic at my home because in those days, you know, you had a long tail and two horns if you did anything with any sort of weird plants, right. you know. Uh, I bet they all thought, oh, you're a bit of a weirdo. Well, no, they used to use the word witch. It was even worse, actually. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Especially when I first went to, to Crossroads there. That was in 1975. Yeah. So once I opened up a little shop there on the corner... Um, I did other things sort of in there. It was just a normal little shop and I used to just turn up and have a little curtained-off area in the back corner, Bob. And then from there it just grew and I think it was the public that started calling me a herbalist. But uh, nutrition was actually probably my main concern. when I first heard about concern. you, people said, you've got to go see this little lady. She's got diamonds in her teeth and gold <laughs> and she's a little small person with a, 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 a hair that flows almost like... Uh, what's the name of that, that girl who had long, massive blonde hair that people jumped out the... Oh. She crawled down the window from outside. Oh, Rapunzel. 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 I don't think it was ever that long. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. And and you know your your name got to be known everywhere. And I think people know who Marty Morrow is. I think you you've become a, a well known icon, yes. inside, haven't you? Well, you helped them with where I moved to, and um, so it's been amazing. Some of my really old patients that. You know, haven't I haven't seen for many many years? Have come back. Have come back. Have yes, they, yeah. when they found out where I lived, they've come back. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And it's lovely to hear about their children, and sometimes they even see their grandchildren. You know, that are in their teens, and I think, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, by being on there for twenty thirty years, it, it, <clears throat> you're going through not only three decades, but you're talking about a, you know a couple of generations of people, aren't you? That's right. Yes, and we've been on together for so long; it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> To talk to each other. A yeah. situation now, when money talk. By the way, this is the only time I've never seen you advertise anywhere. You just come no, here I don't. Yes. and we talk about this, and people yes. are sick on the outside of the yeah. inside. You tell them what it's all about, yeah. and well, I like this because they're like do? patients on the phone, yeah. and they're real people yeah. that need help but can't get to me or can't get to see me, and sometimes just little things. But you sort of feel like you're helping everyone. She's a genuine lady, darling, isn't she? Definitely, yeah. yes. You really are, Marnie. You're not allowed to answer my questions by yes and no. You've got to talk. <laughs> what's, what's wrong with you today? Anything on the outside or the inside? No, no, Marnie's got I've me on a program her. at the moment, oh, which really? I'm halfway through, I know, Marnie. That's right. Uh, to get the minerals, you know, leach minerals out of my body or toxins, is that correct? That's Am I right, right yes, yes, yes. And then you said when I finish that, you're going to suggest something else, aren't you? Yes, something to start building up the good minerals then when we get oh. rid of those. Yes, that's right. what we have to do then. So, yes. what, so what you got in her body now? Well, she's got a metal oh, toxin. Bloody people are sending messages. Go away, will you? <laughs> now, now, Bob. <laughs> you could turn it off, darling. No. <laughs> oh, we've got calls for, for here. Oh, we've got calls for you right now. Oh, really? Oh, okay. beautiful. Hey, Anna. Oh, hi. You're, on the, air. You're on the air, Anna. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, Marnie's here. Hello, Anna. Hi, Marnie. Hi, Anna. Oh, look, um... I've got a, uh, my son has a bit of a problem. He goes, days he's been constipated, and then it all seems to come at once. Um, 
what they commonly sounds like what they commonly call irritable bowel syndrome which is a it, it's a name that we it's sort of like a label these days that's put right. onto everyone that perhaps their diet isn't quite correct so we call oh. it irritable bowel syndrome ibs um, well, and he you, probably is a bit of a naughty boy with his food is he well he is i mean he's 17 and you know he gets stuck into pizzas and um you know and um fills up with tops that up with chips and uh and the old uh, burger and, <laughs> and all those naughty things yes and, uh, yeah, oh, yes. yeah look you know you can get away with having something you know a, a fast meal sort of once a week it's when they start doing it right. three and four times a week that they strike trouble and well, really every day <laughs> yeah and it really just boils so, sort of down to having really good vegetables and varied diet and not skipping breakfast every 17 you know so many of our teenagers are skipping that first meal in the day they time their clocks to wake up literally you know sort of 10 15 minutes before they've got to get out the front door and there's no time for anything you know a quick shower and boom they're gone yeah. um, and they're not spending that time to just relax and have a good meal at the beginning of the day well, you that's know him. Yeah. yes and yeah. things like acidophilus or yogurt is a very right. easy breakfast to have you can have acidophilus with say um pureed banana even or some berries in it can be quite pleasant that's something yeah. they can sort of even have on the run um and that's very good and then of course we need um lots of foods that um, help fight infections because if you've got IBS then that's going to be your next problem. You know, keep yeah. your heavy red meats down but don't eliminate them necessarily altogether. Yeah. But Australians have far too big a portion, you know, they'll sit down to a great big steak. Like and probably moi. Like moi. Yes, I know, exactly. When you see you could have a quarter of what you usually have and have it more often even, you know. Right. Um, take yeah. a little bit for lunch next day. Lots of fruit and veg. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, and food... It's hard sometimes, you know, with the 17-year-old boy. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's very indicative, isn't it? Yes. Well, yeah. The, oh, I guess I can just try my best. Yes, and, um, that's all you can do. So, and yeah. small meals fairly sort of frequently. Tell him to drink lots of water, right? Because sometimes they don't drink enough. Um, yeah. And they don't lots have to overdo. Yeah. Well, that's guarana, and that is. A caffeine literally yeah. they're having in a small one of those small cans of red bull that they get they're literally having about six cups of coffee coffee they're oh. very strong and of course it's got sugary substances in there so it's sweetened for a more of an instantaneous effect yeah. and that can affect their brain too over a long period of time they can even yeah. get the shakes you know I've had oh, teenage yeah. kids come and they're actually trembling um, you know when you see them and then you find out how much coffee they're having plus their Red Bull, then they go to a party and they're mixing that with other things. And, you know, it can have a disastrous effect over time on that system. Oh, OK. I'll do my best. OK. Thanks, Thank Anna. you, Marnie. Bye-bye, dear. Bye-bye. Remember the telephone number, folks, because it probably will be the last time you hear it for a long, long time until uh, Marnie's able to get on the on the air with somebody else on the on, on, the, on a program. But 82979533, you should have that automatically on the on your fridge. Uh, if anything goes wrong in the household, things go wrong with the family, you just have to dial that number and Marnie's on the other end to tell you what to do and how to do it and... And if you, she talks about medicines on the air, you, you call it medicines? No, remedies. Remedies. Yes, she much talks nicer about, word. Yeah, yeah. She talks about <laughs> remedies on the air. Uh, you can get hold of those remedies by calling 82979533 and she will in turn organise it to be uh, to be sent to you by post. 21 to 9, there are people ringing, darling. It's good, they're getting through somehow on the other line. Listen, Gavin Turner, if you're listening right now, Gavin, friend of my mate Pat Marciano's, he uh, asked to be given a call tonight and to say hello. Well, I'm saying hello to Gavin Turner, who's been a, a listener for a long time. 8223-0000. Hi, Joby. Is it, oh, so Josie, sorry. Hello, Josie. Hello. Josie! Ah, oh, piss off, Josie. I really can't see people who are probably listening to the bloody radio. Hello, Marg. How are you? Yeah, you're on the air, darling. Hello, Pretty dear. Pretty good. How are you? Yeah, you're I'm on the good, air, but how Marg. are you? How are you feeling? 
I have a boil on my left leg. What what can I do about it? You've got a boil. Okay, probably one of the best things is uh, cabbage ointment. It's used a lot for cysts and boils that sort of don't come to a head. So it's it's cabbage ointment. In the old days, we used to use heated cabbage leaves and put them on and then tie them around with a bandage. But now you can get an ointment, which is a much easier way of using it. So cabbage ointment. Where do, where do I get that from? Well, Bob just gave out my number, so if you like to ring it. Have you got a pen? I got a paper. You haven't, you haven't got a bloody pen. I got a paper here. Well, have you got a pen to write on that paper? Yes. Good. Write this number down. Eight two. You got that? Yeah. yeah. Eight two nine seven. Eight two nine seven. Yeah. Nine five. Nine five. Three three. Free, free. Free, free. Is yeah. 82979533. Now, you call that number and Marnie will tell you how to get hold of it. You can pay her through the telephone and she'll post it out to you and you'll all be happy and gay the Laxet way. Okay. 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 Thanks, See Marnie. See you. Bye. 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 What happened to that last lady that was supposed to be here? 8223 Nick Xenophon has arrived. He's outside there. you like Nick, don't you, dear? I'm talking to you, Marnie. Oh. Yes. You like Nick, don't you? Yes. You better. Yes. Uh, Nicko, uh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's bought some, he's bought some um, uh, Yanni's Euros in for all of us. Oh, to have yummy. Like Yanni's Euros? Uh, Nick, bring it in. Bring the food into the studio, please. <laughs> he, he's bought the, the, the stuff in. We shall... <laughs> He's got euros on his finger. Oh, look at this. Wait, little oh, pig. Gosh. You got to pay little pig. You sit down over there, um, uh, Nick. Sit down on that one over there. Hello, dear. <laughs> Hi. Wait, did you go to the yardies and pick that up? No, no, no. I... Well, I... Oh, Jesus. What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Sit down in the chair. You Which chair? This chair. Your this chair. There's a chair here. there. Oh, right I'll sit here. Right. I'll sit in this one. It's actually from um, in at Euros' house with a little note. What? Some people actually like you. It's a, it's a shock. <laughs> you, mean, you mean you got it for nothing? Well, he wouldn't take money off me. Uh, Andrew's, Andrew's bringing you some things to wipe your fingers because you've been eating euros and, and tzatziki and all that sort of stuff. That's right. Is that good for you, Dale? Euros, I think anything's good for you in moderation. In it's moderation. called having a varied diet, but euros has usually got a lot of very healthy things in it. Yes. There you are. Hmm. You got anything wrong with your knee? Have you met Marnie Morrow? No, I've heard about the famous Marnie. Well, this is Nick Xenophon, Marnie. Hi, Nick. Yes, heard about you too, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> very hard not to hear about That's Nick, isn't right. it? That's yeah. right, yes. What have you got wrong with you on the inside or the I outside? Know, well, I need to tell you a story, though, because yeah. I... Philip Nitschke, of course, is known as, you know, for his views on euthanasia. Dr. Death, yeah. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, <laughs> I didn't mean that. Though. How are your lawyers going tonight? I agree with I, you. I, 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 I'm on, on his side. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a plane a few uh, a few months ago, and I was sitting at the back in the economy where I normally sit, and on comes Dr. Nitschke. I could have sworn he took one look at me and started salivating. <laughs> he said, well, here comes some money you're going to pay me to get to die. <laughs> no, no. That's really a bit peakish. What's, now, that, what's that got to do with Marnie Morrow feeling good and bad? Because she's the opposite. She's the opposite. She's the opposite. She sort of oh. makes people better. Yeah, right. She gives people life. <laughs> right. But in one way, so does he, because what he does, he helps them with that, you know, people that are really, really seriously ill, and mm. they start panicking, and they die before they have to. And some Sometimes they don't necessarily even take his advice, but just knowing that mm. there is something there is very peaceful for them. It's part of the big debate. I mean, I, yeah. my, you know, you support it, I don't support it. It's, you don't support it? What no. the hell's wrong with wanting to die if you want to? <laughs> Bloody politicians, I thought you agreed with something like that. I've agreed with everything you do. I'm giving out how to vote notices for you. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> but listen, I can, can I tell you this? There's a great there's a great line from Ed Koch, the former mayor of New York City. He's yeah. a bit of a rat bag like you. Yeah. And he once said, if you agree with me on 9 out of 12 issues, vote for me. If you agree with me on 12 out of 12 issues, go see a psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> boom, 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 back in oh. love at 15 minutes to 9 o'clock. Oh, I'm with Marty Morrow. If you want to call her, 8223 Hi, this is Brian Cad, remembering with horror the many days and nights and lunches and drinks that I've had with this horrifying man over my life. He's always been a great friend of Australian music and uh, to the people of Adelaide. One of my favourite stories about Bob was quite recent. It was only in the last few years and we were having, we had lunch in North Adelaide, this beautiful restaurant and 
<clears throat> and fortunately it was on ground level because Bobby was in his gopher and the end of this raucous lunch, all of a sudden he shook everyone's hand. He said, OK, I'm off now. See you later, Caddy. And he, he pounded out the door and straight onto the footpath, turned right and headed down about as fast as that thing could go. People jumping out all over the place to get from being run over. And I thought, even in a state of, of reasonable immobility, he's still a dangerous man to be around. Congratulations, Bob. 57 years on Adelaide Radio. All the best in your retirement. From 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. 8223 Bob Francis. 8223 for Marnie. There's only about 12 minutes to go, folks. Uh, give her a call. Now, Lee Prettyjohn, who is always on the air with uh, Michael Keelan on Saturday and Sunday mornings. I'm not too sure if it's for Saturday and Sunday or Saturday or Sunday or one of the bloody three. But he... I'm sure he's going to ring you up and ask you about his voice because he can hardly talk. He talks like that through his... Are you there, Lee? Bobby, hey. how are you? Hi, mate. Hey, yeah. listen, a question for Marnie. Yeah, yeah I'm here. Um, i got a granddaughter that's got a wart. Yes. Is it true to put urine on the wart to get rid of it? <laughs> Actually, you know, I have had people come in to me and that's exactly what they've done and it's been fantastic. Really? However, I think through your paste is a lot um, um, better and doesn't quite sound so offensive. But which, yes, which the, paste? Through your T-H-U-J-A. You know, the tree, the bush? Yep. 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 Okay. Well, well, you ought to know about bloody bushes. You're the gardener. That's right. Yeah. So if you, what you could actually do, I'll tell you what to do. You can go and pick a bit. Get a little bit and grind it up to a really, really fine powder. Now, it's fairly oily, so it'll be a little bit sticky. And then if you've got a little bit of vodka, you could put in a few drops of vodka. Sounds right? Good. Okay. And then you dab that on, put a little bandage around the wart. And then pee on it just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, now, listen, Bob. After you've put a penny in the urine for a couple of seconds, <laughs> right? <laughs> now, listen, Bob. What? Remember when we were about 16, 17 years of age? Oh, years my of God. Age? Yes. How yeah, you, you went to that? Prince's. Yes. I went to Scotch. Did you go to Scotch? I went to Scotch. My yeah. first meeting with you was at Rowley Park Speedway. Get off. And the Scotch boys and the Prince's boys used to walk the speedway. And we go round and, and round we go and round, round and round <laughs> in a group. And this particular night, we were walking around the back of the pits, and we started to get followed by a bunch of bodgies. Do you remember the bodgies? Oh, in those days? oh, oh mate, I was scared there. I oh, remember I wearing a pair of pink jeans going down there one <laughs> night, and I really <laughs> nearly fell over myself. <laughs> Anyhow, they started to give us a bit of rubbish. You know, they were swearing at us and they were calling us college putters. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah, I do. <laughs> and I remember after about five or ten minutes, you turned around and grabbed the leader by the shirt with one arm, <laughs> lifted him off the ground and said, if you keep on swearing, I'll punch your teeth so far down your throat, you'll have to stick your fingers up your bum to bite your fingernails. Was I that rude? Yeah. In those days? In those days. <laughs> and there was complete silence. And they you know, out. for the next half an hour, they followed us around trying to be friends. Well, I, I don't remember that particular <laughs> night, mate, but I do remember that. over the years remember I've that. become friends with bodgies because every time I saw them, I went, hi, guys, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> All the best, Bob, for your retirement. Thank you, Lee. Don't forget that do your paste and pee on it. OK, will do. Thanks, uh, thank you, mate. Bye. Lee Pretty John. Eight and a half minutes to nine o'clock. Where do the people get that idea about peeing in the water? Oh, it's a very, very old one. It comes from Europe years and years ago. And the same with the penny. The penny, penny goes very colourful when it's put into the pea. And then, of course, you put that on your wart. Hmm. What, what, and what's, what's in... in... What's, I don't what's know. What's in wee wee? I really well, I uh, suppose uric acid. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and copper, perhaps, from the penny. See, it, it, <laughs> because I think she reads so much these days after that's following, right. uh, following you. My <laughs> wife's here, by the way. That's uh, that's Anna's voice. Uh, and I just, there's nobody else on the line waiting. They're all waiting for me now. So start telling them about the things that go wrong with you. You've always got something wrong with you. You're a fan. <laughs> you're Marnie's fan club president. You are. Well. 
I think I'm a pretty healthy person, but I'm, oh, I believe in prevention. Yeah. So, you know, I read all I can about... And that's what she says all the time, isn't exactly. it? Exactly, yes. yes. It's when you're healthy that you mm. need to look at what exactly. you do. Exactly, make sure your body's it. in balance, yes. not too acidic, and your diet's right. And if you do all that, Bob, you won't end up with diabetes and all like the problems me, you've got. Like me. Yes, darling. <laughs> so, so did I do wrong... Uh, in, in my early life to be having diabetes and glaucoma and all that. I've eaten, eaten too much. You'll have to tell me. You'll have to say, yes, you have, you silly bastard. Well, yes, I'd love to say that. In fact, oh. I just might. I've never ever said that well, to you all known, these years. You've known me long enough. You should try it, you money. silly bastard. <laughs> <laughs> you've known me long enough. <laughs> That's right. It's often combinations of food, Bob, you know, and eating in between meals, you know, like somebody brings you in a little goodie and you have yeah. a little bit of that. Like a bit of year ice for yeah, me, Jennifer. Yes. Yeah. That's right. And the yes. bottles of J&B, oh, you know, with Coke, yes, night yes, after night. night. Yes, all <laughs> those. Oh, I remember those days. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, we used to sit here and have a lovely glass of red wine oh, in the early days. Oh, it was absolutely wonderful in yeah, the early fantastic. days. Yes. And, and um, new, new bosses came in. And yes. they were standing out there tonight um, checking on me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, I'm sure they're not doing that tonight, Bob. You've probably no. got a free reign no, that, tonight. That, that will be, be, be nice tonight. That's right. 82979533. What are your two addresses where you uh, do your clinics? Well, if they ring 82979533, I can give them, but it's Clarence Park and Paynham. Oh, so you, you'll go to any of those two places, yes, depending on yes, where, where yes, those people want to yes, go during the week. Yes. All right. Well, it looks like I'm going to finish five minutes early because it's, and they're all waiting for me now. They're all waiting uh, to oh, talk yeah, to you, all Bob. All waiting for me. Yes. So I'm going to say thank you, Dave. Thank you for your, your help in the past. You've done me a lot of good with all the scratching and itching and things that have been going wrong with, <laughs> with my bloody <laughs> skin. And my body. <laughs> oh, that carrot ointment has worked wonders on my body with warts. Yes, I remember oh, yes, years ago I had a wart stuck right on the palm of my hand and I used to pick it with a, um, what do you call it, those paper clips. Clips, you know? yes. Yeah, and, and you could uh, do that. And you dig at it and dig out, you know, and it, it bleed. You know. Wasn't fig milk supposed to be an old remedy? Yeah, well, that's very similar to the food. Oh, that's the see. same thing. Right. Yes, mm. yes, yes. It's like two, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. right, ah. yes. And thank you, Bob. I've enjoyed my nights coming in here. Even when you yell at me when oh. I'm late, I still enjoy coming in. <laughs> what are you going to take next time you're supposed to be at a place on time? You've always turned oh. up ten minutes on bloody time. I don't You've always got a bloody good... excuse not to be here. Well, do you know a good naturopath that I could go and visit? <laughs> yeah, good yes, idea. Yes, something for me memory. Something to give you. What's, what's good for memory? <laughs> oh, lots of things. But the old and most famous one, of course, is rosemary. And then gypsy weed is very good too. Beautiful. Mm. Is it with bat's wings and frog's oh, legs? Oh, all of those Just got to remember to love. take it, Marnie. That's right, <laughs> yes. That's all about Thank you, Marnie. Thank okay. you. You've been fantastic. Thank you, Bob. Eight two nine seven eight two nine seven nine five double three. Big Bad Bob. Big Bad Bob. Fatty Francis. Stupid. A lot of it is um, probably not really suitable for radio. However, one that I can relate is regarding the five o'clock Friday night sessions in Fatty's office for the drinks. They were just something else again, always crowded. But then there was always a downside because then Bob would always go on the wagon for about three months. So the five o'clock Friday night, door locked, and he would be like a bear with a sore head for three months around the studio so we could not wait until he unlocked that door on five o'clock on a friday and the drink session started all over again it was good fun it made us been a stellar career from the beatles through 5ad through double a you are the man no question good luck in retirement love you steve Whittam, signing off cheers mate congratulations bob 57 years on adelaide radio all the best in your retirement from 1395 adelaide's 5 aa Beautiful, Steve. Thank you. Nick Xenophon's frothing at the mouth trying to get into the studio to say what's wrong with him because he now suddenly feels bad and he knows that Marnie's going. There's one more caller for you, Marnie, before you go. Hey, Faye. Hi, Bob. How are you? Good, dear. I've been told to ask what's wrong with the fungus on the toe so I can get to speak to you. The fungus on your toes? On your toe. toes. What, in between your toes? <laughs> Something like that, yes. OK. We actually have a wonderful cream and it's just called fungus cream. It's really, really good. You've got to be very very careful with drying in between mm. your toes very much because, you know, tinea can be a real problem. Um, but it's it's a really good cream that after you've dried it very, very thoroughly, yeah. massage that in and you'll find that a big help. Well, look, I want to wish you, Bob, and, and all the best for your retirement, but I've got a little musical tribute I wish to share with you. Make it quick. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey, get a boy, sing. <laughs> What's the bloody tune? La 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 la. <laughs> oh, Faye. What the hell was that? That's my what? piano accordion. What was the song, though? Oh, I was playing the Echo Waltz, and then I added your theme to it, your oh, theme song to I it. I knew that was my my, my song. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Faye. Good All night. Thank you, Faye. All Good night, Marty. Good night, Bob. You don't argue with Bob unless you're certain you're right. Even then, he'll put up one hell of a fight. Some say he likes the sound of his really big voice, but then it's Bob's show, so it's really Bob's choice. That's Bob. Big Bad Bob. 1395 Adelaide's 5AA with Bob Francis. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm loaded with people in the studio here at the moment. Nick Zeta finds me. Graham Corns has just walked in. Can oh, I, Graham? Bob, I, you know, I wouldn't have forgiven myself if I didn't come in and say goodbye. Now I didn't know what you think about that. But no, it's <laughs> lovely. I think for it's really how many lovely. years did we change over and? You tell us to nick off out of the studio in the worst possible way. You never ever politely say get out of the studio. It was but, the worst way you, you can say. You know that's me, don't you? Right? And then you nearly punched me that day. <laughs> you nearly punched me. <laughs> you know, I came in here one day and he parked in the car park outside the old building uh, and he parked across the road from one of the ladies working at TAB. Yeah. And he said, she, 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 said, she said he, he wouldn't move his car. So I came in, Graham. I said, Graham, move your car. You're a bit of an asshole, aren't you? That's not how it happened. It was. She parked in my car park. Yeah, that's my right. car yeah, park. Yeah, and you wouldn't move your car because and she couldn't I, get and out. I, no, I, I, I put my car there so she had to come and see me, and I say, and I would have said, well, please don't park there next time, but she didn't. She waited, and you came in at seven o'clock and said, you ranted at me. How dare <laughs> you block that poor lady out? Right. And, uh, well, it was like that. And I said, well, she's in my car park. He said, your car park? It's not your bloody car park. <laughs> and I was... Then you said, go and on. You said, kept the yelling at me. And you you said, go and hit me. I said, no, no, no. I said, go and hurt me. Yeah, go and hit me. Because, you know, yelling at me does not hurt me. So I'm going, hurt me, hurt me. Go and hurt me. Well, More. I nearly, I nearly did. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, now we're friends. I'm a dangerous, I'm a dangerous man. Yeah. Uh, well, that was just... Well, I, even husbands and wives and best mates have... Arguments, don't of they? Course, get over it. So of course. It's very unusual in a working relationship not to. But I learnt so much from you. Yeah. And I don't know whether I actually employed you. You learned how to put money in the bank and you'd be able to, you, you were able to, to, to retire oh, much earlier than me because you oh, gave well, me that, that beautiful bottle of Grange because <laughs> I'd give you no advice about, about uh, uh, finance, putting money in. Yeah. Finance. So that was, no, but it was more the. Uh, I could listen to the way you talk, and I thought, why can't I read an ad like Bob? <laughs> and you'd come in and you'd say, "You've got to speak from your stomach. You're, you're talking from yeah, the back. You're, you're talking still, from the back of you're your." You still talk out of the top of your head like that. But I, yeah. when I concentrate, I, you, you, you do speak from your from your stomach. So, and I'd listen to your beautifully modulated voice and the way you read those ads and the, the timber, the timbre. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> I could never get it. I think it. I think it was because you smoked so much when you were young. I think yeah, that, that was because of that. Yeah, yeah. That's why I spoke. That's why I speak so beautifully. And yet, is that why you're bold? Is what? Like bold. You did your brinner say? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Don't smoke. <laughs> Don't ever smoke. Um, well, I gave up a long time ago, and I, that, that hasn't done any harm to my voice. We had fun. Remember the uh, seven o'clock to eight o'clock when we had the music. Segment where oh. people would ring up and sing, and uh, the boys would <laughs> and, come and in. You and you loved that, didn't you? Cause well, it, it just, it, well, some people were horrible. Let's face it, but at least <laughs> they had a go. But but it was fun. There was and some, bloody Keith Thomas, who was general manager, came down and said, "Get that oh. shit off." <laughs> there was one young girl who was, I don't know, about ten years of age, and she sang. She sang all the uh, Frank Sinatra stuff, you know, yeah, all, all the yeah. cabaret stuff. Yeah. I don't know where she got her influence. I often wonder what happened to her because she sang so. Well, as a ten-year-old, yeah. now fifteen years ago, that would have been. Oh, easy. She'd be twenty-five. Is she making a living? No idea. If anyone knows, you ever get round the nightclubs? <laughs> have we got any nightclubs these days? Do we have nightclubs? <laughs> no, I don't think okay. so. I don't think so. Um, you been to a nightclub recently, Nick? Yeah, well, Jules Bar, nineteen seventy-seven, <laughs> on the pre-night. <laughs> where, where were you have time to go to a bloody nightclub? Nineteen seventy-seven. I went there was a, on the Tuesday nights for free. I went in just to check it out. Seventy-seven. <laughs> Do you have any leisure time? No. Not, not during an election campaign. This no. is my leisure time. Yeah. This is it for the next four and a half weeks. Oh, when I rang him last night, he said, I'm coming in tomorrow night anyway. And I said, oh, well, thanks. 
Uh, he invited mm. himself in. Oh, uh, yeah. No, hang on. I won't repeat exactly but what I was you ringing be. because you, I wanted you to come in anyway. Mm. Uh, and I am... I'm putting out how to vote cards for you. Somebody wrote to me and I thought it was you. Oh, jeez. Uh, I'm worried that my vote's going to disappear at that polling booth. <laughs> you abuse people. But, but if I don't turn up, just remind the lady that, to change the voting day because I've got a letter of, of thank you and, yes, will you be there at 11 o'clock on the day of the original Julia Gillard's voting day? The 14th, it's but September now it's the 7th. It's the 7th. Now it's the 7th, yeah. Okay. It's the 7th. It's a dangerous job. Darling, darling job. you put that in my diary, please? I've got to put out Nick Xenophon how to vote cards. It's a dangerous job, that. I, I did it for Nicole in 2007 with that ill-fated campaign that she had, and I was doing, you know, you're trying to be nice to people, and you, and this guy came in with a really, like a, a middle-aged guy, I suppose, and I... Handed him, a, uh, just handed him a how to vote card, and he, look, he, he looked at it and sneered at it, and he tore it up. He said, "I don't vote for bimbos." Oh, uh, what oh. a dick! <laughs> oh, what can, a dick! You can't <laughs> punch <laughs> voters, can you? No, I suppose you can. No, but I, I did wait for him to come out. <laughs> You know, it's just explained bimbos don't do this and don't do that and don't have law degrees and don't do that. So sort I of made my point and put him in his place. Did, well, he, did just, he believe you? He probably said, well, but his you're, wife was well really, you're an effing bimbo. No, no, his, his wife was really good. I think she probably was a bit embarrassed. She said, OK, fair enough. <laughs> oh, oh, but when, so, when you get into politics, so you angry. have to, have you have to take all the shit as yeah. well as the good stuff, don't exactly. you, Nick? Absolutely. you yeah. got to get a thicker skin. Do you, do you, get, do you get much? You, you, would, you would get much, wouldn't you? No, nah, a bit. A bit. Yeah. I still remember in my in my first uh, what about year Greek or two. Greek wog bastard. Oh. <laughs> no, there are some there are some fictitious <laughs> Facebook sites with some interesting topics. I remember my first uh, first year during the ENSA debate that Rex Joy, who I really like, yeah. wrote a column about heroes and villains around yeah. the world, and he he listed all these heroes like. Um, um, you know, Andy Thomas and Mother Teresa and Don Bradman, he was still alive. And then the villains were people like um, Saddam Hussein and President Saharo. Yeah. And there's only one South Australian on this, that was me, because I wouldn't provide, you know, support the sale of it. <laughs> it's a, oh, Monica Lewinsky was on the list, so I don't know what she did wrong. <laughs> but uh, well, how, smart, how, how, how smart were you? That, that sale of Etza has to be the, the greatest travesty. I mean, I, yeah, what is, you're right. The sale of Etza. Oh, I'm not giving you the politics, buggy. Get off that line. What are you on the, You're now I'm moving into politics, he, are you? He raised it. Who it's cares? My fault. He's a politician. My fault. Well, stop yeah, bringing up bloody wasn't, politics. Wasn't what do you think you're a politician? If you, weren't on your, if you weren't on your phone and paying attention to your guests... <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were running for the Senate this the year. The sale of... It's a, John Olson said some nice words about me. Really? He, he sold it, didn't he? The truest words John Olson ever said was, was were that you only believe the people that say they're not going to vote for you. Yeah. You I like John Olson, though, the people so that say they're not going to vote for you. Oh. He's, he's a good man, John Olson. I mean, very, no, go on, go on bring up more politics, go on. No, that's, that's personalities. That's South Australian personalities. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 he's president of the SNFL now. Absolutely, yeah. And you're a life member. Yeah, I know. Yeah, must feel um, good about that. Oh. Don't make light of that. What do you think about the Adelaide Oval and not being able to have a transferable ticket if you become a member of Adelaide Oval, the footy and cricket? Oh, that's the cricket? That's the stupid bloody cricket association. The wankers as of much the cricket as I association. Like, yeah. Ian McLaughlin. But why wouldn't you have a, a transferable ticket? Because they don't want yobbos in there. You know, and they'll go, oh, God, bloody Port Adelaide, bloody oh, yobbos come what? down there. They won't play. You know, all the guys, the doctors who are in there watching the cricket, they're going to be some bloody Port Adelaide yobbo walking past and going, g'day, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> but the football ticket is transferable. The, mate, the football ticket is transferable. Oh, rack off. Everybody wants to send me bloody that. But Billy Gonis, go away, Bill. I, um... <laughs> Go out the back of the member stand, uh, you know, after tea on most test days, and there's not much difference between the yobbos there and the yobbos out in the outer. So mm. I cannot, for the life of me, understand why that would not be a transferable ticket. But I tell you what, that, are you, are, that, how big that is, was looking nice, isn't it? It's how big monster. is it? You live up there. Yeah. Is it surprise you how big the stands are? Oh, now somebody's ringing me. It's bloody Andrew Reiner. Will you go? Will you? Will you go away? You rat! Get off the line! <laughs> no! Don't be turn off my phone. No! But did it, has it, you, you're a North Adelaide resident. Has it surprised you how 
big it is. Oh, I, well, I, I quite like it now, actually. I, I wasn't for it going going ahead. I can't but imagine. But going down Montefiore Hill and seeing what the old stands look like at night time, they've lit that up beautifully, oh. and it looks really nice. How's Anne Moran handling it? I uh, don't know, but she sent me a little note saying, please be careful on your... Go- <laughs> <laughs> She's at last also said uh, three hour parking in North Adelaide and two hour parking somewhere else, and that's good because the day it's freezing cold and raining like hell, and Pennington Terrace is closed down, and then people park up my in front of my house. Oh. Wrong, no more. Okay, it's two hour parking, you can't go to the forty CLA. Uh, excuse me, it's a commercial radio station. Good day, Fatty. Retire? I tell you what, I thought you'd retire in a box with a logo on it. But anyway, it's Barry Martin, mate. Uh, over the years, you've helped me a lot and uh, you've been a really good mentor. I must remember the time that you came to Perth with Barry Ian, but we were on air with Baz and Watsy, the original Baz and Watsy, uh, in I think it was early 1974, we've been on air for about a year and a bit, and uh, we said, what are, you, what are you bastards doing in town? And you replied, well, we're just coming over to have a listen. Then came Baz and Pilk, I thought, gee, and then there was, we had Billy Coke Bottle, and you got Jimmy Fantatop. Mate, get original. Congratulations, Bob. 57 years on Adelaide Radio. All the best in your retirement. From 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. 5AA time is 17 minutes past 9 o'clock in the studio. Nick Xenophon and Graham Corns talking about bloody politics. Hang on, let me turn your microphones on. Just talking about (laughs) life, Bob. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Life, yeah, okay. Yeah. And what, uh, a, what a wonderful I've got mental... a million people who are dying to talk to me. Yeah. Why don't you rack off? Okay. Yeah? Just... I you, you came in and said, you know, do you mind if okay, I say it? Going. Are you going to wish me goodbye and all that sort of stuff? You no, came, that's what you came no, in doing. No, because you just want all the... You just came in... You just want all the accolades and yeah. everyone telling you how good you are and we're yeah. going to miss you. Yeah. The, how do, how the, do you feel about being retired? You look much younger. <laughs> I've noticed you on television. You look much younger. All the cracks have come out of your face and everything. It's the <laughs> I haven't missed I haven't missed the radio station yet, and I've worked with great guys. That don't yeah. don't get me wrong, yeah. and it was a great job. Yeah. It was the best job you'd probably have. But it's I don't know with young kids. I think it's it's been great yeah. being, being people laughed at my gag this afternoon when I made my speech and I said, "Where in the world could you have a job where the customer is always wrong?" <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> Corey Bernardi's ringing you. Corey Bernardi, Senator. They all want to get on my show because it gives them a chance. I'm, I'm to leaving get... before Corey. Starts Corey, because I'm, I'm here and you're on the outside, Corey. <laughs> How he, can a he man... would have been welcome in here. How can a man what? How can a man with a name like with a surname like Bernardi, yeah. have such an aversion to people trying to get to this country? Huh? You know, what's that got to do with it? Well, because he's... Don't all, you we're, start we're, bringing we're, up the bloody we're, boat we're all, people who are really got the They're all immigrants. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Corey, yeah, yeah Corey's so actually a very approachable bloke. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you may agree to disagree with me, he's actually a very approachable bloke. <laughs> right okay. All right. Thank you, Greg, Ray, Thanks, for coming Bob, in. Thanks, uh, Bob. It's, uh, yeah, it's been delight, great. Delighted that you came yeah, in. And, um, would, would you please get me another caller, Andrew, so I can talk to somebody? Oh, look, Corey, but that is on the line. <laughs> hey, guess what, Corey? You know who's in the studio with... Oh, hang on. He's got... What? I lost it. No. I... How did Corey d- disappear? Up, <laughs> <laughs> Quick, yeah. Get, get back and ad-lib. He's telling you to ad-lib. Sit down and ad-lib. Who? Ad-lib, quickly. <laughs> Nick, you ad-lib as well. No, no, we're... <laughs> we're He's not got, libs. trying to get him back. We're not libs. No, no, you're not, that's right. Yeah, you add labour and you add... Ad's, no, ad I'm, Bob, I'm... I'm you're very much centre. Oh, slightly, yeah. slightly it's only left because left you don't want to. You don't want to tell anybody. Here's who you Corey. Are. Here's, here's, here's Corey. A green here's Corey. social liberal. Yeah. Is here's Corey. You, you know who's liberal. <laughs> you know who's liberal. Moi. Okay. Oh, no, no. I am liberal. No. Moi. But I'll vote for Nick Xenophon. I've got to say that. <laughs> G'day, Corey Bernardi, Senator. Bob. Bob, how you doing? All right, mate. You know who's in the studio? I, I know Nick Xenophon's <laughs> there, and, and look, he won't admit it, but the dirty, dark secret is he was a young Liberal once or something. Yeah, he's a youthful indiscretion. We all make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> we all make mistakes. Senator Graham Corns is here too. I was a member of the Liberal, liberal Party a long time ago. Well, yeah. Yeah. But you're not now. But they move so far to the right. Who is? No, we're a broad church, Graham. Yeah, no, you are not. <laughs> Every, the politics has moved so far to the right. Bob, Bob Menzies wouldn't recognise it. <laughs> well, you know, oh, yeah. geez. Hey, Corey, I'm on your side. I think it's my program oh, and I'll go on with it. Yeah. And can I tell you, you've been on the side of the battlers for uh, 57 years, mate. Did you hear what the goose said just a moment ago? That what because a name like Bernardi, how would you be against Buddy Boat people? Yeah, 
What a wank attitude. <laughs> Not a wanker. We are all immigrants to this. Can we all deserve so, a yeah, chance? Okay, if, no, you're, if, you're, yeah. if you're brave enough to go that way... Oh, I came from you, Egypt. No, I suppose you'd say you're Egyptian. Oh, well, I'm not. <laughs> You're not Egyptian. <laughs> you, you know, you know, guys, I didn't ring up for a political discussion. I oh, ring okay. up to congratulate <laughs> a bloke okay. on doing a fantastic job. And it's unfortunate that you want to politicise all this greatness. That yeah, you're right. right. You're right, Corey. Right, you. <laughs> yeah. But, Corey, I already left. You, you're too late. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, if you want to if you want to talk politics, I'm happy to talk football. No, 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 no. It was just a throwaway <laughs> line, Corey. Hey, Bob. You know, it's been a remarkable time, and um, I just want to ring and congratulate you. All. It's just incredible what you've contributed to South Australia, and you're one of one of our great characters. And I just think there were. Um, I wish there were more people with the courage of their convictions than the people. Well, that thank you for coming on the up, air mate. when you needed me most. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, that's true. But also, Bob, I remember you used to say all the time at election time, uh, I'm not having politicians on because they never ring in during the rest of the time. And, yeah. and I, I remembered that and I thought, well, when we went through the battle of the emissions trading scheme and I'd ring up and explain it to you and your listeners and um, and I thought, no, I'll keep ringing in on occasions and I would on the way home. Yeah, you yeah, have. And you've done that. Go, and, and then your dad kids. rings up to try to back you up. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about that? Was uncanny. The one time he I, he got bumped from your queue because I rang in, yeah. and then he was on immediately afterwards. And he rang me up and said, "You know, since when did you become more important than me, son?" <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, it's had, there's been some great memories and some. Um, I'm sure they're shared by so many South Australians. But you've been a true legend, and I just wanted to pay my respects and say good on you. And I hope to see you at the Central Markets in yeah. uh, uh, the next weekend or two. I'll be there, Corey. Thank you, mate. That'll be great. All Bye. the best to you. Saturday, Corey, Bennett. It'll just hurt a little. Dare to call. Big Bob Francis. This is my very, very, very last show ever after 54 years of being on radio, and I know it's a long time to, uh, to, to a lot of people, but to me, it has been a lifetime, and I'm nearly dead. But there are two people who have been on the air as long as I have. <laughs> Bob Power and Ann Wills, and I put you on together. <laughs> Uh, Hi, girls and boys. And you're nearly dead. Well, you know what? When your darling man, Andrew Rhymer, rang through just a little while ago, he said, is this a secret admirer? And I nearly hung up on him. <laughs> so, Andrew, you I'm had sorry, so but, many. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, if somebody gives you says, is that Anne Wilson's is a secret admirer? I said, I'm, I'm hanging up. <laughs> so he so said, no, 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 it's really it's Andrew. It's not going to be the same without you. <laughs> no, it's ter terrible it's going to be. No, Bobby... You know, it can't be the last one. I think you've got to do uh, just come back every now and again. Yeah, come back just to do a, a, a nostalgia night talking about the theatre and things. I think it'd be great. All That'd the great good. movies yeah. of all time and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And what are you going to do with yourself? You know who's in the studio with me? Who's the, who is there? Nick Zephon. Oh, good old Nick. Oh, <laughs> Nick, I asked you to marry me once, but I don't think you heard it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have earplugs in. Because uh, I've always been a great admirer of yours, and Bobby Thanks. Parr was will um, stick up for me here. I haven't, haven't I, Bobby? I said, yes, I'll marry you, Nick. But are you already you, married? You're going to be best... You're going to... Um, uh, no. But uh, <laughs> Bob was going to be best man. No, notice yeah, how he hesitated. Both of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be matron of honour. <laughs> oh, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> uh, well, it's just... Uh, it's a very sad day for Australian radio, not just Adelaide radio. It certainly is, yeah. Yes. Now, listen, Bobby, you said when we were in the studio last that so you, you haven't been to the movies for a while. Anna goes. But Anna loves the movies. You, you you know, Anna, Anna's in the studio with me. I, I love know, the yes, movies. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Anna, darling. How are you, Anne? How are you going to go with him home all the time? Ask me this time next year if I'm still alive. <laughs> <and same. laughs> now, hang on, Bobby, what was your question? You, you, you're going to go to the movies. You, t you promised us that you'd go to the movies yeah. with us. What we'll do... We'll go up to Mount Barker yeah. with Wilsey and, and Leon yeah. and, and Anna and yourself and uh, we'll have a meal and go to see a movie. What are we going to see? I don't know. I'll wait until there's something that, you, that I know you'll love. It better not be something that I go to sleep in after 10 minutes. No, 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 no. <laughs> that, that was a good day actually when we used to have featurettes because I could have my little nod off for the 20 minutes and then wake up for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and he, you think he's joking? No, it's no, no. true. So you do have that? 
Uh, no, no, that's what we used to have. Remember the, when in the city theatres they used to have the featurettes in interval? Yeah. Well, I used to like the featurettes. I never saw any of them. I used to have my sleep then. <laughs> ah, and, and you programmed those, did you? <laughs> Spe- yes, yes. Especially well, for the They got well. increasingly boring as time went on. That's why we cut them out. <laughs> yeah. But, no, you've never been boring, Bob. Never. And it's been great with Wilsey and I. You know, you've let, you've let us come in and we've really enjoyed those nights that we've been in there with you. Fantastic. Wilsey, thank you for the comments you've made on the air uh, on those little vignettes that we put on. This afternoon, Tony Pilkington came in uh, at my uh, drinks at the station here. I was at the movies, otherwise I'd have been there. He spoke for 15 minutes and it was just belly laugh stuff (laughs) for 15 minutes. He was Uh, bloody brilliant. I should have recorded it so we can play it. I I think we have recorded it somewhere. I'm getting it. Well, I tomorrow. will miss coming in on Thursday nights, even though I'm up at 6 o'clock every Thursday <laughs> to go to work in the morning. But I will miss that, even though, as I said, I never got to sleep until 2 o'clock on Friday morning because it was a late night. Yeah. But they were great nights, my darling. And, and now we'll have to have that dinner soon. Bobby, that's a good idea of yours that we go up to, to Ockendorick yeah. House. Got me. You paying, Bobby? Yeah, I'll pay. Got me, smooth talker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you mean many, you mean there's still there's still the boss is out there in the control room. There's still wafkas available even when you're not on the air. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. You can only have one course, though, Bob. Okay. <laughs> and please apologise to Andrew because if somebody gets hold of my my home number, it's a silent number. I know what it is. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> but I didn't know who the voice was ringing up saying he was a secret admirer and I was just about to hang up and he said, no, no, it's Andrew. I'm oh, sorry. I, I, I was, I'm, I'm the one who gave it to him, Wilsey, so you can build me. Oh. Oh, it's OK, no, it's just that I, I thought, because I've had a few strange calls and strange requests this week from outsiders like... A fireman wants me to go somewhere for a party, and I don't even know who they are. Andrew well, says he knows where you live, too. Well, he better come around soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, wait a minute. Wait, after Nick. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no pokies. <laughs> he <laughs> said he doesn't do sloppy seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Bob Francis. Yeah. Thank you, Wolsey. And, and you are really a very generous, fabulous performer, and we I'd love working with you. Thank you, Bobby Parr. Yeah, okay, See mate. You, bye. See you, bye. Hi, Bob. It's Bev Harrell here. Well, I've known Bob probably since I was a teenager, singing in the Vibrance. Um, and then I have fond memories at the Princeton Club where he was a compere and I was probably about 17 and extremely shy and I remember I would sing but I wouldn't talk, I was just too shy and I remember this particular time when I'd finished singing the song and then he said, Beverly, now what are you going to sing next? And he put the microphone in front of me and I ran off the stage. I was so shy but what he did was each night just encouraged me, encouraged me to talk, so I really thank him for that. Um, and now I can't stop talking. He had all the big shows around town, Centennial Hall, where I uh, sang with Roy Orbison and the Rolling Stones. Um, he, he really did support all the acts and the singers, and we're just going to miss him so much. Oh, Bob, can't go, no. <laughs> um, and of course, of course, he brought the Beatles to Australia with the, to Adelaide with Ron Tremaine. And, I mean, he's just such a big personality. I just, there's no one really to fill his shoes. Just have a great time. Now, you, you deserve it. You deserve lots of holidays and good times. And you'll still be around, I'm sure. We'll probably see you in North Adelaide or at the coffee shop. Bye for now. Congratulations, Bob. 57 years on Adelaide Radio. All the best in your retirement. From 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. Do you know what you missed an hour and a quarter ago? I crossed live to the Adelaide Festival Theatre to Johnny Young in the audience, in, in the, on the stage, and the whole audience packed out, said goodbye, Bob. Isn't that lovely? And you missed that. Get interactive now. Text 1399 1395. 1395, Adelaide 5AA. Nick Xenophon has just promised that he won't scold me if I repeat what I know in Greek. Am I allowed to say what I know in Greek? No, don't. Because sure. ACMA, look, ACMA for the listeners, <laughs> ACMA is the Australian Communications Media Authority. Yes. It's the sort of, it's the disciplinary body if you get in trouble. Yes. Uh, I know you, them. You, you know <laughs> them. Now, Bob, I need to tell you that in right. Canberra tonight, they're actually laying off staff in ACMA because of your retirement. 
Uh, my the, the the station lawyer rang me today. <laughs> he'll, be, said, he'll be unemployed. <laughs> no, it's a woman. It's a, she'll and be she's, unemployed. She said, "Unbelievable! It's just really fantastic to know that these things are working for me, and you've just taught me so much. And every time I bring up the worst things that have happened on radio to all the radio stations in Australia, you're the you're the force for." <laughs> it's beautiful. Now, um, I well, can I announce it. Because of your, your extensive knowledge of Greek, you're going to go on Greek community radio after oh, this. Oh, yes. Come on, yeah. <laughs> Don't Greek, say... Tikanis, Tikanis, kala! Evkaristo, kalista, kutalaki! See, they're all nice clean words, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't repeat what you said earlier in Greek, which would get us... We should probably get the, the Greek um, communications authority on to us. see, every Greek person, from what I know, <laughs> it's really a very simple thing. It's not nasty, dirty, but I've even said it to women, because great Greek guys say, go on, say what you you know in Greek, and I say it, and the ladies laugh their heads off. But I won't do it on the air. Thank goodness. And they won't, they won't use a dump button on you because I'm going to say wanker, so I'm allowed to say Malaka. <laughs> it's a very nice town in Malaysia, but I can't go there anymore. That's right. <laughs> now, Bob, I'm going to go. All right. Well, tell me what, tell I just want to say my yeah. first memory of you yeah. was in 1964. I was in grade one at PAC. <laughs> And you brought the bloody Beatles over. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry, but that's all. That was a talk of the school. That was it. You were like the Greek god. What school god. Are you at? PAC. Oh, you were at PC? Yeah, I only because it was... But, you know, I, I was, com- know you I was compared to the Chapel Brothers because, uh, you know, the Chapel Brothers over there. I was at school with them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I remember in grade six, Mr Wilcox... Uh, uh, looking over my looking over my shoulder, doing some arithmetic, got a whack at the back of the head, saying, "You're a drone, just like the Chapel Brothers, but at least they could play cricket." <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, Billy, that. <laughs> well, I'll kind of miss you, but I'll I'll, ca- I'll catch up with you. I'll oh, see you on election night. Uh, but, you will, because I'll be there giving out your bloody posters, pal. I can tell you. Try not to abuse people too How much. Do so. I, no, no, I'll be nice. You know that I can be nice if I have to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'll have to be nice that bloody though. <laughs> When are you going to be prime minister? When are you going to put set up a party? I reckon. I, I have. You know, you, you had more bloody votes than the Liberal Party in South Australia. <laughs> no, not quite. Just a, well, not just quite. as one bloody single senator, and you could have a party going. I've only. I've got. I mean, you got I've more got, chance of having a party and becoming prime minister than that fat pig in in bloody Queensland. <laughs> What's his name? Palmer. <laughs> now, just he's he's well, you know, he's of Titanic proportions. That uh, that. <laughs> No, I've got a party, Nick Xenophon group, so I can be above the line. Uh, but that's it. It's only got two members. And if you want to... It's only got two members. You only have to have two members to get only you have above to have the line. One. I only have to have one. If you're a member of parliament, it's it's just a mechanism so people can vote for me above the line. But I don't want to talk about politics. I want to wish you all the best. All right, thank you. I want to catch up with you. If you store. If you store, don't say what you know in Greek. Or in other words, you know in Greek. <laughs> and I'll see you on election night. All right. Uh, if not before. <laughs> thank you, Nick. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for coming, Nick Xenophon. <laughs> 21 and a half minutes. And, and thanks for the Euros, too. From where? The Falafel House. From from Yeros House, from Amin, who was very excited that it was for you. Thank he wouldn't you. take any money from me, yeah. but I tried to force giving him $20. Okay, it's not Patriotis. All. He's not Greek. Uh, oh. but Ahmed, he'd be Lebanese. Amin. Um, yeah, I think Amin. he's Lebanese. Amin, Lebanese. Yeah, lovely Shukran. bloke. Shukran, shukran. He's a lovely bloke, whoever it is. <laughs> and his wife's a big fan. I'll see you later, mate. See you. Hi, Jeremy Cordeaux. We're reminiscing about this great man, Bob Francis's career, which is... Uh, I don't know, 57 years, they tell me. I I can't believe you could have time fly past like that, but I guess it has. I first met Bob when I was doing Blind Date uh, in Sydney at Channel 10 in 1971, I think it was, and they flew me over for the uh, uh, Good Friday appeal at Channel 7, and Bob was the, uh, the kingpin, and he... Ruled the roost with uh, such um, eccentricity and enthusiasm that I had never seen before in my entire show business life. And I thought, my goodness me, uh, this, this, this man obviously runs Adelaide. And, of course, he did. Uh, he was the, uh, the general manager of 5AD, which I was privileged to come back some years later and buy. Um, a great management person, a great people person a great entertainer, and I still can't believe that uh, he's satisfied with 57 years. I mean, Bob, if you want to retire, retire and enjoy it. But um, we need you. 
show business is, is, is always short of great entertainers, and you are one of the best. God bless you. Congratulations, Bob. 57 years on Adelaide Radio. All the best in your retirement. From 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. 8223 0000. Don't bother about calling, folks, at the moment because the board is just over full. Hello, Warren. Gee whiz, Bob. Two hours and 20 minutes to go, mate. Oh, well. Wow. Then that's be- it for you, eh? I, I can't believe, now, um, I can't believe how good that's going to be. No, that'd be great for you. Um, you really deserved it, really. I mean, um, I've been listening to you with my wife for, well, at least 12 years now, probably even a bit longer. So I can admit I've gone to bed with Bob. That's beautiful. Um, Thank you. <laughs> now, I just, I just want to say that it's actually been a, a privilege to listen to you, mate. Um, it, it, you've really entertained me and um, helped me, you know, through some tough times here and there. It's good to listen to you. Just, you know, you relax me in the, the day sometimes. And um, now it's been a, a real, a real privilege to listen to you. It's, it's nice to happy. hear that reaction from people. You know, you, you don't realise what you do for people until people like yourself come and say, you help me, you relax me, you, you know, you were my companion, I was lying in hospital nearly dying, but, you know, you made me laugh. And that, that sort of stuff is uh, very uplifting and enlightening. No, no, you, you, you're quite special, man. You, you're a special bloke. I've, um, I heard, I'm not too sure if it's true or not. Did you, did you uh, uh, make Roy Orbison or something like that with his sunglasses, something like that? Is that true or...? Did, did I what? With Roy Orbison, did you have something to do with him wearing his dark sunglasses throughout his career? No, 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 no. No, he, no. He's got a, a disease of the eye uh, that that the rays of the sun hurt his eyes, and he has to wear glasses all the time. Uh, right. I, I happen to have a photograph with uh, Roy, who uh, the, the day he wasn't wearing eyeglasses, very, very rare that you see Roy without sunglasses on. Yeah. So I've got a photograph with him with those same glasses, but no, no, I had nothing to do with. Oh, okay. Uh, I must well, somebody said I smashed him in the eyes or <laughs> No, no, no. no. Uh, and, Bloody amazing uh, how stories get around. It, it is, it is, for sure. But um, I was just saying, um, what, what, what are you going to play for your last song tonight? Are you going leave, to leave, uh, leave it a surprise? Or? Yeah, well, it, I mean, it, it's a very well-known song, but I, I think how I feel about it, uh, you will understand why I'm playing it. Yeah, yeah, OK. Because I said to my brother, because my brother's Gavin Turner, who um, you, you said something to before. Oh, then I said hello. He's a friend of uh, my lawyer, and he said yeah, to yeah, me, say, good day, Kip, yeah. Yeah, they Pat Marciano, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, you could have, you know, the old Frank Sinatra my way, that'd be a good one for you. Yeah, I've had a lot of requests. I've, loved it. Yeah. I've had a lot of requests. I thought you would, but have, I'll yeah. do it. I'll do it my way. That's right, <laughs> and you should, mate. No, you've had, you've had a good innings, man, 57 years. I mean, I'm, I don't, I'm not even 57 years of age, so... Really? <laughs> you know, you paid your, you paid your dues, mate, you know what I mean? Like, it's a, yeah, it's amazing, really, that you're still working, you know? Thank you, uh, it, it, thank it you, just proves, It proves that you're... Um, uh, you're not working for me, you work because you love it, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. So, and you enjoy it, you can hear in your voice that you enjoy it, and it's great how you abuse some people, which really, it is, it's fantastic, mate, you know what I mean? It's just that there's so many goody-goodies out there, you know, you can't, you can't, <laughs> I mean, say what you want to say sometimes. That's the you? worst part about it, mate. I, I, I look forward to tomorrow morning and midnight tonight where I can walk out of this place and say exactly what I want to say and nobody's going to tell me how wrong I was and what it was. That's but right, until man. then, all the bosses are watching me, and I promise I won't say anything wrong. You might, you might, you can let one rip at eleven fifty-five if you like. I might. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't get the sack, mate. You know who cares? <laughs> and that's a good attitude you've got. You know what I mean? It's, and you're quite positive as well. So, um, no, you, you know, you, you know, I'm sure your wife's really proud of you. Are you but, proud of um, me, darling? Hang on, hang on, let me turn the microphone. Yeah, I'm very proud of him. Yeah, I think he's done a lot for a lot of people. Oh, no, you have, you have, you have. And I she's remember, beautiful, and, remember, and I'm proud of her too. <laughs> and I remember years ago, it just stuck with me, this little boy years ago, it must have been about 2005 or 2004, didn't you ride your motorbike out and see him out at Gore or something like that and take him for a ride? Is that true? Didn't know what? You took your, your Harley out there years Joy, ago, t- picked him up or something, little, a little boy, and took him somewhere. I'm sure you oh, did. oh, this is a long time ago, kids. Yeah. Uh, I've taken people for rides because they were suffering from cancer or they were, they were sick yeah. and they wanted me to go out there and pick them. Yeah, I've done that a few times. Yeah, yeah, no, it's really special. The little yeah. things like that you probably don't remember, but, you know, some each uh, person has got their own little, you know, secrecy they, they like about you, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, no, it's really, really fantastic. Well, and um, I'll let my daughter have a bit of listening to you tonight, Malika. Her name's Malika. How old is she? And um, uh, she's six. Yeah. Has she enjoyed it? She enjoyed it because we were calling Uncle Bob because I was with my brother before. We were calling Uncle Bob, and she That's... goes, "He's not my uncle," you know, trying to explain <laughs> that, you know. Teach no, her really politeness. Good. Uncle Bob is fine. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. so uh, hopefully one day I'll get it to meet you. That'd be really good. Good on you. Thank you, Warren. You know? Anyway, no worries, Uncle Bob. Thanks Take for coming. Bye, 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 bye. Back in just a moment. Eight double two three double o double o. Bob Francis. Ten and a half minutes to ten o'clock. Have a look. Have a look at who's on the switchboard. My old mate Frankie Davidson. Hello, old Good man. Bobby. I still haven't had time to thank you for thank you for uh, in- introducing me to Javachichi at that restaurant. In, <laughs> hey, you in remember Pine the bar- you know the barbecue in finished about <laughs> six or seven weeks ago. Oh yeah, did you really? And those beautiful chivapta cheese. Well, I never, I never eaten them before, but they you introduced me in that night. It was fantastic. <laughs> I came right. over as president of Baha'i Fight Club, of which, which you were the other half. How and lovely that, to hear from you, mate. Thank you very much. It's, uh, uh, I congratulate you on a fantastic career because we all know, no matter where we are, I've travelled, travelled long and far, but you, you're one of the great stars in our caper. Well, so are you, man. You know, I, don't, black shit, black <laughs> I don't know if you remember th- this day. We were at the Meyer Emporium in town here. Gosh, it must be in the real early days. And I think Barry Stanton was supposed to make a uh, an appearance in the record store. Right. Uh, in the record place. And you were with me and he didn't turn up and I didn't know what to do. And you got up with no music and did Danny Kay's The Little Fiddle. <laughs> Do you remember that at all? Yeah, I, I remember the I remember the routine. <laughs> well, I it went for about eight or nine minutes, and it was just fantastic. You killed them. Thank you, man. People have forgotten who Danny K is now. That's right. <laughs> but uh, I remember those early days with Ivan Damon, Ivan Damon's dance circus dance. And yeah. Stuff. And the thing that sticks out in my mind is the pie floater. <laughs> Good things, uh, the, uh, talking about Ivan Damon, my wife, who uh, I married eight years ago, she's my fifth wife. How many? Uh, fifth wife. Really? Uh, used to um, be with her mother, but her mother was with Ivan Damon. Oh, right. And she used to live in the house. Well, she's here tonight, Frankie. Uh, uh, and my, my wife is uh, Anna. It's right. Anna. Do you remember Pauline? Yes. Well, I'm I'm Pauline's daughter, Anna. I was about 12 when you came to South Australia and stayed with us. And yeah, then in my teenage we, years. That, that was our accombination back in those That's days. That's right. <laughs> you were in my bedroom, but I wasn't in it then. <laughs> 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 I used to take over uh, our bed. My I, sister and myself had got kicked I know out. nothing. That's <laughs> <laughs> she's a, be- That's she's a beautiful God. lady. She's my fifth wife. She's lovely. She's kept on telling me about this situation of living at Ivan Damon's place and all the big stars came well, and Peter Allen and all that. Johnny O'Keefe and Pat Zanova. Yeah, Zanobon. we all turned up. But yes. I'm, it's a pity that they haven't, there hasn't been better, better mileage for Ivan through the years because he did so much for the business. Oh, he yes. sure did, but, yeah. But, yeah, but uh, people, it's about you tonight, and uh, i just like to say congratulations. It's been a pleasure knowing you. And I remember that, that uh, I hope we can run into each other again somewhere along the way in your retirement. We can have a drink. Well, you know, you're very welcome. Uh, you're, 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 but you're, I remember the last time the last time I actually saw you physically, you were, we, we were driving past, I think, Ian Turpey, uh, Lucky Star and myself, and we drove past in the car where you have lunch on the Friday out in the street, and we wound down the window and everybody waved, and you sort of with your gang of people out the front, where everybody abuses you, they drive past. <laughs> and uh, Turpy jumped out and grabbed two bottles where we had red off the oh, table. I remember he, 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 he and, and took off like a gang and <laughs> looked like, like a gangster. It was like a heist. You know? Stole it, two bottles off the table. And suddenly, the, we, I thought, well, who the hell is this? <laughs> he jumped back in the car and you wrecked off to another dining place. Yeah, we had a gig further down the road, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that well. Oh, it was fant- fantastic. And, you know, when you go back to the old Zoomans Club, you remember the Zoomans Club? Absolutely. After the shows, to go down and yeah, have a few the, drinks and behind the of, zoo. A bag of old, and we used to have <laughs> everybody who step us at the local brewery. You could hear lions and tigers <laughs> roaring in the background <laughs> at the back of the pub. But I'm a dance band person. That was basically where it all happened. Uh, Frank, but, uh, Frank, some of the great moments in my life, the, the, have you ever been to see King's Cross when you were with 5AD, stayed in the top of the charts for seven weeks? Unbelievable. And, yeah, I, and, and, and being on the top of the charts, I don't know how many times I heard that, because being the disc jockey in the 4 to 8 uh, area, I had to play that probably three times a night for 17 bloody weeks. It drove me nuts. Yeah, my, my, <laughs> Serves you right. You can you think about it at the erection party you're going to have in about seven weeks, isn't it? <laughs> Is that what you said it was? I'm That's when it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been to see King's Cross? Where Sydney's home is me. Anyway, I have been to see Bob 
Bob Francis, I've enjoyed his company and I wish you all your best in your uh, uh, in your retirement, mate. Franco, thank you very much for talking to us. Okay, mate. Bye bye, Frankie Davidson in Balgala. Big Bad Bob. Hello, Leon Biner. I can remember listening to Bob Francis on 5AA not long after he started with the radio station doing nights. And I remember he did an ad for Matani Chicken Salt. Now, this might seem almost insignificant, but the enthusiasm with which he read that commercial really inspired me. And I thought, isn't that amazing for a bloke who's been in the industry for many decades? Bob, we're going to miss you very much. And by the way, I used to think DB was decibel, but now it's D-brain. Still can't get my head around that, but I leave it with you, my friend. Congratulations, Bob. 57 years on Adelaide Radio. All the best in your retirement. From 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. I'm having problems with my board here, and I wanted to say something, but I thought I'd better not because all the bosses are watching. So I think, oh, dash, damn, bother and bugger. Three minutes to ten. Eight Dublin. Oh, he's back again. You beauty. Thank you, Andrew. Hello, John. G'day, Bob. How are you, mate? All right, mate. Good. Hey, uh, I'd just like to say a couple of things. That um, one, one, uh, one night or a few, I suppose about 18 months ago, you had some bozo on the radio that was saying to you, oh, you don't do anything, you laze around all this. Yeah. Well, I'd like to let that person know that one day I, I happened to catch the bus in the town and I saw you around the market on the, on the side there where you have a cup of coffee. Yep. I walked up to 5AA because I had to get uh, a couple of tickets. I walked out the door, was just about ready to talk, walk into bloody Weymouth Street, and you come hurling around the corner, and then you knocked me A over T, <laughs> and you stopped. We had a bit of a yarn for about 10 or 15 minutes, and I talked you into blowing your hooter when you took off, so you, you end up flying back down Weymouth Street. Yeah. Then I went over to Adelaide Arcade, I think it was. I was walking through down to Harris Scarfs as I was. There you were, sitting having a cup of coffee with, with someone. And blow me down, I'd catch the bus out of my son's place up at Prospect, and there's this bloody blue um, uh, trolley bike. There's you flying it's up the hill. bloody gopher. A <laughs> gopher, whatever it is, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I yeah, was there was again. Good. Oh, goodness me. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, just, yeah but, I'm but, just but, everywhere, but, everywhere. <laughs> but this, this, this blows it up, this, this bozo that said you didn't do anything. And then I, one thing, I, you know, another thing I'd like to say that very nice about you, when you had your unit for sale... Up off Glen Osmond Road. Hey, on a, yeah, the, my your, wife, your missus. My wife's house. Yeah, her, yeah, my wife's yeah. house. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my missus and I pulled up there uh, after it had closed, and then all of a sudden you you pulled up, and we started having a little bit of a yarn, and you you and your wife took my missus through the house, showed her right through the house, all that sort of stuff, and I think that was just magnificent. Well, it's bloody just people oh. in your position overseas and Amazing. in the state. Wouldn't do that, Bob. No, that's right. They're all and, bastards. And I'm, I'm the best guy in the bloody world. No, but hang on, <laughs> hang on. We're looking at... You look at people on on radio and just say over in America and all this. They don't talk to ordinary people like me. And yeah. you took your time out to speak to us. And this is where it's been... People don't realise how much of a nice person you are. And it's magnificent that, that we've been able to talk to you just like a, a normal person. And I'm, I feel quite privileged about that. Well, thank you much, very much, you bloody old wanker. <laughs> <laughs> Up yours too, Bobby. Yeah, well, thank you, John. Right. <laughs> See you, bye-bye. Eight double two three double o double o. The board is just overfilled at the moment, and we're not not even at the halfway house. Amazing. I just want to say a quick g'day to to Trevor Williams, who's on Nilpina Station. Out from Udnadatta in the middle of nowhere. He goes out apparently. Whitey came down to see me today, uh, Trevor, uh, out at Cochinas, and he said, Say good day to Trevor Williams at Nil Pinna because he goes out in the bush every night, puts his stack down, and lies in bed and puts his radio up alongside and listens to Big Bob. And I said, Bloody beauty, Bonzo Ripper. Good day, Trev. Nice to know you're still listening, son. Every evening at eight, you can hear him arrive. Stand six feet tall, weighs 285, Big Bob. Big Bob. Big Bad Bob. 1395, Adelaide's 5AA, with Bob Francis. 
Six minutes past ten o'clock. Welcome back to the entertainment capital of Talkback Radio in the world. And at six minutes past ten, I can always remember saying to a lot of my friends, I go, thank you and good afternoon. And it's always the famous saying of the race callers. And one of the great race callers of this afternoon, Terry McAuliffe's on the line. G'day, Terry. How are you, Bob? I can't <laughs> believe this is it, mate. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can remember having to sit at uh, 5 AA when we were doing trots and everything and, and, and racehorses, and in the middle of a call talk back, I'd have to say, hold the line a moment, they're racing at Donald, and they have to cross over to you to be right. What a load of crap that was. That was real good radio in those days. Jeez. Well, <laughs> I can probably remember Bobby having to cross to me for maybe Strath Albert Greyhound race 10 on a Wednesday night or That's to right. Thunder Trots race 8 yeah. on a Tuesday it's night. It's a bit cold down here, <laughs> but the dogs are already on the track. There's only four people at the track. <laughs> and I was one of them, Bob, and I yeah. still have one of those people going. <laughs> You're still calling, are you, Because you know, you know how, how, how I loved horse racing. Yeah, uh, no, yeah. I still am, Bob. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm still uh, whacking away at the game, mate, as you've done for you a long, long call... time. and you call all forms of racing? Oh, look, I'm, I'm pretty much just calling the gallops these days, Bob, but yeah. occasionally I might, Bob, oh, I did a Globe Darty meeting last week and I was at the Gawler Greyhounds on Tuesday afternoon this week, so occasionally I might be uh, thrown into one of the other codes as well. But, mate, like, congratulations on what has been an unbelievable career. And I must say, Bob, even though we haven't worked together for a long time, I've been listening to you for a long, long time because Christine... Every night when we go to bed, we go to bed with Bob Francis. Why don't bloody people ring me? You know, everybody would <laughs> say that. We listen to you every night, but nobody ever rings because they think, oh, no, oh, I haven't got the time to, or I'm too tired. Oh, stop sending me bloody messages. Well, no, Christine, I'm not going to turn off the phone. It's Christine's, eight a bit, Christine's a bit shy, Bob, but um, she does love listening, and you have entertained her for uh, the best part of... We've been married for nearly 13 years, Bob, and you've been entertaining her for longer than I've been entertaining her. Is that, is that your first <laughs> wife or your second wife? <laughs> is that first wife or second wife? Oh, gee. Or third not wife. As many, not as many as you anyway, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Always love to talk to you, mate. You're a lovely guy. You're a bit of a short ass, but you're a lovely guy. Congratulations, Bob. <laughs> uh, hopefully I'll catch up with you one day for a coffee, mate. Thank you, mate. See you, pal. Bye. Hi, Bob. Jane Riley here. I just want to remind you of a really funny story of something that happened to us a long time ago. I reckon it was about 1976. I had just started in television and it was back in the days of media junkets. And a whole plane load of TV people and radio people went up to the Gold Coast. And we all had to share apartments, like a three bedroom apartment. And it was lots of fun. And they showed us all the sights of the Gold Coast. I happened to be in the same apartment as you. And I'd been swimming the night before and I'd left my one-piece Miss Beach Girl swimming costume in the bathroom to dry and got up the next morning and walking down the hallway towards me was the most bizarre, horrifying sight I had seen in my young life at that time it was Bob Francis. I don't know what size you were, Bob, but I was like a size 8. You wearing my one-piece swimming costume. It barely stre stretched across your midriff and it looked like you had a plunging top. That vision of you has always stayed in my mind. All the best, Bob, and now I can't even fit into the swimming costume. Congratulations, Bob. 57 years on Adelaide Radio. All the best in your retirement from 1395. Adelaide's 5AA. I ripped that bathing suit the hell, didn't I, Janie? Nine and a half minutes past ten o'clock. Hello, James. Hello, my friend. Uh, Bob, there's uh, the Rolling Stones in music, Muhammad Ali in boxing, um, Sir Donald Bradman in cricket, and there's Bob Franz in, in radio, mate. Bloody hell. But I only live in Adelaide. All those were big-time international stars yeah, of the world. Yeah, but I mean, people but like so you, am I, so who cares? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People like you, the calibre of you, uh, come around by, yeah, one every, once every hundred years, mate. So yeah. it'll be a very sad day, mate. There'll never be another Bob Francis, and uh, they've lost me between eight and midnight, mate. Oh, well. Yeah. You, you know, you're like saying it. that directly to the bosses of the station who are sitting outside no, there, no, saying, hoping the hell that I don't drop the magic word at midnight so they're here to, yeah. to, to push the bloody dump button if yeah. I do. <laughs> no, no, be, yeah, that's right. They don't know. They'll never, never, never be the same, mate. I, I really mean that. So, Thank you, James. Thanks, thanks for all the years of entertaining, mate. And, uh, yeah, and, all, and all the best, um, you and Anna, mate. Thank and you, mate. your birthday today, isn't it? No, it's my last day. Uh, birthday's not till March 11th. Oh, I, I thought you were still in today, yeah. Send me a present. <laughs> I will. Not a problem. Okay, <laughs> yes, mate. See you, mate. Bye. See you, mate.
God, it's amazing. The people who call me from all faiths and everything. And oh, Father Sean's on the phone. Hello, Father. <laughs> How are you, Bob? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here at Westall Bar having a wine for you with Jimmy from the sales department. I hope it's I hope it's the free wine from the back of the church. You better believe it. it's not the other one, man. And <laughs> I'm, I'm with Chip from Ganga Ganga Band as well. So we're thinking about you, mate, and and um, wishing you all the best. Eh? Thank you. Are you speaking and, uh, English? Yes, yeah, speaking okay. English. <laughs> After a few wines, it's a bit difficult. <laughs> but mate, you've been a great gift to South Australia and to Australia. Thank you, Father. Uh, and it's very rare that uh, I have people uh, of the cloth who call me, uh, but you've been kind to me many times, and I appreciate that. No worries, mate. I hope I catch up with you in the market or somewhere you in will. the near future. You will. Love to you. To be anime. sure, to be sure. <laughs> It'll just hurt a little. Dare to call. Big Bob Francis. I want to say hello to my favourite little waitress at Cucina's. She's pregnant at the moment. I call her Prego. It's little fat guts. Uh, but uh, Laura's listening to the programme tonight. And I hope you'll have a nice hot cup of coffee for Anna and I when we're ready to be there at half past seven tomorrow morning at Cucina the Inn. And also from Helen Cordina. Helen used to work here at 5AA. Uh, she says, goodbye, Bob. My husband loved you so much that we moved here just for me to work at 5AA with you. After working with you, I loved you so much that I would ring after a few drinkies just to say wanker on the air. Thanks to you, I have a memorable marriage proposal which has led to a fantastic marriage and three lovely children. We all wish you the best and thank you for everything. Good on you. Lovely Helen Cordina. She used to write scripts here. 15 minutes past 10 on 5AA. Now 15 minutes. Am I up to date? Yes, I am. Hello, Jay. Hi, Bob. Hi. I just wanted to say hello to you from my nana, Roma Adlam. She's 94 and she loves you. She's 94? Yeah, she's been listening for so long. Why, like why, every... why didn't she ring me? She's um, in a home right now, like oh, a nursing home. All right. And she can't get to the phone. And did she but, know yeah, that I was... She's so sad that you're going off. She knew that I was going off tonight. She said, now you please ring my Bobby up and tell him goodbye. Yes, she wanted me to because I met you at a book signing um, last year. Where? Um, do, you remember, uh, do you remember where it West was? Westlake Shopping Centre. Oh, down the Westlake Shopping Centre, yeah. 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 That was upstairs. You said you were going to get married. I was going to get married? To me. Oh, to you? Did I? Well, yeah, goodness I'm still me. Waiting. My wife's still, still here in the, in the studio. Uh, that gets me worried now. Did I really say that to you? Oh, no. I must have <laughs> made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for calling me and say hello to your mum. What's your mum's name? Uh, your grandma's name? Roma. Roma. And she's listening yeah. right now, is she? Yes. It's quarter past ten. She's still wakey wakeys. Yeah, she's a rebel. All oh, right. <laughs> you sort of go to bed early next time. Okay, I will. Thank you, Jay, and thanks for calling Thank me. you. Bye. Bye-bye, right. bye. Hi, Dan. Uh, uh, Stan, Bob, Stan. Oh, oh Stan. Hello, Stan. Uh, Stan, uh, lo Bob, uh, long-time <laughs> listener, first-time caller, but I've been in six the last few years, yeah. and living with my daughter, who's a nurse after a hip operation. You sound like and John Blake making out you're an old man. I couldn't believe, <laughs> Bob. Uh, I came back to Adelaide. I returned to Adelaide, and I found... Why do you piss off, Dick Brain? 17 minutes past 10 o'clock, I knew some asshole making up some bloody voice, and you're not going to get past me because I wasn't born yesterday, dicko. Eight double two three double o double o. Hi, Jason. G'day, Bob. How are you, mate? All right, good. Yeah, I had, had a few good chats with you over the time, mate. Just wanted to wish you uh, all the best, buddy. Thank you, and, mate. Uh, yeah, I'd just just like to say two things. Um, one, you're a dick brain. Two, you're a wanker. There we go. Another one. Another one. It's game playing time. Come on, piss bots. Come on the line. Have a go at me, you uh, dickheads. Oh, Fatty, Bob Francis, you are an absolute legend. A lot of us that started in broadcasting looked up to you, mate. 57 long years. Fatty, I remember I started in the Pulteney Street uh, 5AA studio. I was with the Barry Ian Brecky show. And I used to have to walk past Fatty's office every morning. Don't know why he was in there that early when he was doing nights, but I think he used to come in and get away from his 15th wife. Not sure. But I remember doing a cross, and uh, I remember saying, H... Hey, Somehow H came up, so BHP or something. And I walked past Fatty's office. He's going, Rowie, because I was Rowie on the road. 
Rowie, with his grumpy voice, get in here. It's f***ing H, not H. And from then on, I have never, ever said H, it's H. But for a bloke that was so brilliant on air, his Queen's English was outstanding. And as a broadcaster, he would correct you with that. And uh, he used to have to correct me a lot. And, and I thank him for that. And my other memory is obviously we've moved to these plush, palatial 5AA new studios in Highmarsh Square. And obviously I'm doing the drive with, with Cornsy and then on with, with Bone. And Fatty would come into the studio at one minute to seven and he'd come on in in the summer with his shorts and he'd sit in a little chair to the left of me. And every day I'd walk out the door, he'd just swear his gizzards at me. And he'd say, get out, are we? And I'd look at him and I'd just couldn't help but look down and just see Popeye's chin. So, Fetty, I'm not going to miss Popeye's chin, but I am going to miss you, mate. You're a legend, and uh, thanks for the memories. Congratulations, Bob. 57 years on Adelaide Radio. All the best in your retirement. From 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. Oh, Rowie, you're such a rude person. 20 minutes past 10 on 5AA. I got a call come in, uh, came in just from England just a moment ago, and it's my lovely, darling little niece, Sancha. Hi, Sanch. Hi, Uncle Bob. How are you, darling? I'm good. How are you? Now, have you moved? I thought you were moving from England to go to New York. I am. I'm moving in September. Oh, so I'll be over there with Mark. How oh, fantastic! Because he told us I when know. he came, he, it was uh, when he, he told us that you'd be there uh, when he came over for for Christmas last year, and he was looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah fantastic. You, now, now you know you can't bunk in at his house because his house is too small. It's no bigger yeah. than a single bed. <laughs> yeah, the dog box. No, yeah, no, I've already it. heard. Yeah. Yeah, Gosh, but hey, I thought it was your last show, and I just wanted to ring in and uh, say hi. Um, I remember calling up when I was just a kid and um, having the joy of being on the radio, um, and also the time when you came um, to school as my show and tell. Yeah. Um, and I just want to say thank you and uh, congratulations on an amazing career. And um, I've been very, very proud to call you my uncle. Thank you, darling, when you're a very pretty, pretty young lady. And, and, uh, My pleasure. Has, Hi, Anna. Yeah, Anna's here. Hi, Hang on, Anna. Darling? Yeah. Hi, darling. Is, <laughs> what's the weather like there? Oh, do you know what? Not too bad for a change, but only about 20 degrees. Oh, beautiful. She sounds so terribly, yeah, terribly. Yeah, she sounds terribly, terribly, yeah. darling. They're beautiful. <laughs> Don't lose it when you go to America, please. <laughs> I won't, I won't. But anyway, I won't keep you. Love but to you. What have, you, been, what, you what have you been doing, Sash? What, what work are you in? I'm at work, actually. I'm but, on my lunch break. But, but doing... I've done a, a sneaky call on my <laughs> lunch break. <laughs> Good on you, darling. Thank, thank you for calling, Sash. Fantastic. Bye. My pleasure. Love you guys. Bye. Uh, love you Bye. too. Bye. Isn't that lovely name? Sancha. 22 minutes past 10. Get interactive now. Phone 8223 0000. 1395 Adelaide's 5AA. I'm Bob Francis, 24 and a half minutes past uh, 10 o'clock. Hi, Matthew. How are you going, Bob? Good, mate. But, uh, first of all, just good luck with your retirement and everything, and I uh, hope you enjoy yourself. Thank you, mate. That was a, a nice, quick, succinct uh, comment to make. Have you been waiting a long time? Oh, not too long, actually. Not too uh, bad tonight. It's tried amazing. a couple of times. It was really busy tonight. It's like, amazing. You know. the, I, I, I wish the board had been like this for the last bloody three months. I mightn't have bloody retired. <laughs> you should retire every day, Bob. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, I'll just ring up today. just wanted to ask you. I'm on Centrelink at the moment, and yeah. I go in there twice a week. I have to do my reporting on a Thursday, and we look for a job on the Friday. And I was wondering, they open up at 8 o'clock. Um, why, I was just wondering if they... Why don't they open up earlier? Why don't they? Yeah, like a seven or six, maybe. I don't know. Have you ever thought about ringing them or telling them or seeing them? Oh, they've just said this is the time we open and that's it. Yeah. Well, they're, they're bureaucrats and they can say what they bloody will like. That's and, true. And if you don't like it, they go, well, stick it in your head. We, we go over that time. And if you don't like it, bad luck. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pity. <laughs> It's a pity they can't sort of help you out by saying, well, hell, I mean, why do you want them to open earlier? You're not working. Well, I'm... Well, work. Sorry, I'm, I'm losing you. I'm oh, sorry. By the time I get out, yeah. I'm late for work. Oh, you are working. Well, what do you want Centrelink for? Oh, well, I collect both, you see. 
Oh, well, aren't you a smart ass? See you later, you dick brain. 26 minutes past 10 o'clock. Oh, I love people like you. Go go and collect the buddy doll and also uh, tell them to wake it up at 7 o'clock in the morning. You wankaroony. Bloody glad I'm leaving people like you behind. Hello, Betty Samus. Oh, honey. <laughs> what a tosser. What a, a tosser, loser. Rooney. <laughs> and he had, to, he had to be just before me, didn't he? <laughs> didn't he? I always attract the losers just all the time. But I'm in far north Queensland. I'm listening to you on the 5AA app. I could not um, not listen to your last show. I, I don't want to get emotional now. But thank you for so many years. Thank you for the last. I will... Never forget the Harris Scarf's opening, how much we laughed our heads off that night. It was a nice night, you wasn't asked, it? Yeah. Well, yeah, you were asking me if there was anyone there under 40. Uh, <laughs> we had a laugh. And you, you, I, I just... I, I just love your sense of humour. Thank you very much. No, and, I asked, was there anybody over bloody 30? Everybody <laughs> at that Harris Scarf opening was a young bloody right. kid. And I'm I thought, mean, who I'm not... the hell are they? <laughs> I was the only guy over 40 years of age and I'm 74. It was. It was just so memorable. Thank you, Bob. And um, I just wish you all the best. I'm sure you're going to come back and fill in occasionally. What, what, uh, maybe. What, what are you doing you in Townsville? I'm just visiting your girlfriend. Oh, I see. But you just want to get up because yeah. it's nice and warm. And I bet you're walking around it in is, bathers and everything, eh? It's, it's a beautiful night and it's lovely up here. Getting a I suntan? Always... Well, I hope I get one. Who knows? Beautiful. <laughs> thank <laughs> you, Betty. get away. But thank you so much. You take care of yourself. And lots of love to Anna. See you, Anna. Thanks, love. Bye. Hey, Malash. My lash. My lash. Me lash. Hello, my lash. Hello, me lash. Somebody's there. That's a bomb! Yeah, so. Hey, guys. I've been waiting for you. Where the hell have you been? Uh, I've been around, but I'm there, but you never see. Uh huh. Anyway, uh, Bob, anyway, uh, good luck with time and all that. Um, just wondering. Um, with elections coming up and that, and yeah. this is going to be my first election that I've, I've, I've enrolled, I'm going to vote. Yeah. To be honest, Bob, I don't think I'm... I'm not, I don't care about politics. Um, I don't know nothing about politics. And to be honest, I wouldn't know who to vote for. You know, I'm too ignorant to vote. I was wondering if anyone out there... Would, would, you, like like a helping, my... would you like a helping hand from me of who you should go and vote for? Uh, not necessarily, but I was wondering, oh. I was thinking I could make a bit of money out of it. Oh. If someone would want to buy my vote. Oh, you want I'm to telling you now, there's people out there who buy my vote. You want to sell whatever, your whoever vote? Whoever they want me to vote for, I'll go there and sign whatever yeah. they want me to sign. Not this time, pal, but thanks for calling. Really enjoyed talking to you, you goose. 28 and a half past... They're coming out of everywhere tonight, which is beautiful. Love you all, you wankers. Hello, Sean. Go, okay, Bob. How you going, buddy? All right, pal. Oh, I'm really going just to wish you all the best and... Uh... Uh, we're we're, we're going to miss you, mate. Thank you, mate. No, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I thought I totally enjoyed you, no? you, you. You what? Hey? Just repeat that again. Hey? Repeat that again. I thought I totally enjoyed you, eh? It's in here. What the hell is he talking about? Nah, well, good to talk to you, mate. Right. Thank you very much, Sean. <laughs> 29 minutes past 10. 8223 0000. The board is full. Hello, Henry. Hello, Bobby. How are you, buddy? <laughs> yeah, I'm great, mate. I've waited up three or four hours out of my time. Just to talk to me. Out, out of my business time oh. to talk to you because, mate. <sighs> What can How you say? can I say this? What can you say? How can I say this? How can you say it? Well, I can just say this by saying you are an absolute legend. Thank you. And not just that, Bob. You're a good man who has been a absolute pillar of strength, not just in this state. But across this country... Bless you. And I, Bob, will pass on to you, and I'm nearly in tears, your what, friendship... What did, what did your mate say in the background? Hello? No, didn't say anything. Oh, all right. 
<laughs> Couldn't say anything. Right. My friendship, what? Keep going. My friendship to you and from my family, I want to pass on this, you legend. You will be not just sorely missed, you will be devastatingly missed. Henry, have you had a few drinky winkies tonight? I have. Oh, I could tell that. I wonder how I could tell that. Well, Jesus Christ, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> You're 74. I just, <laughs> right. You don't know that, yeah. uh, that, that, that to... by now. You know, I mean, but, mate, God bless you. And peace on you. And, mate, forever and ever... You will never be forgotten. You're a bloody legend, Bob Francis. Thank you, Henry. How nice of you to speak like that. That's really lovely. Uh, 28 minutes to 11 o'clock. We're still... We're, we've gone past the halfway mark, which is good to hear. You know, in one and a half hours' time, I'm going to be in bed, and I must say, I haven't said hello to my wife for a while. Are you still awake, darling? I'm still here, darling. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, 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 you have never, in my eight years of marriage to you, uh, have ever been in the studio and Not for this long, have you? Recording, no, never. Uh, now you know exactly what I do. I love. Do you I think love it's it hard? It's fun. Oh, I'd, th- I'd love this job. Would you? Yes, sitting chatting to people and being paid for it. What a great job! No wonder <laughs> you've done it for so long. Maybe I'll stick around. <laughs> uh, but you're not going to uh, not going to miss me not being home, are you? Um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll have oh. I've got some chores lined up for you. Have you really? Oh, yes. Yeah, some painting here and there and <laughs> fence fixing and plastering. <laughs> I'll keep you well, busy. Now there's no money coming in now. You know? Well, as sorry, from... we, can't, we can't afford a handyman now. So. As, yeah, <laughs> as from tomorrow, I'm a pensioner. That's right. Well, not quite, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going to try and get to be a pensioner pretty soon. <laughs> uh, that was Henry. Let's talk to uh, to Bruno. Hi, Bruno. Hi, how are you going, Bob? Good, mate. Oh, it's great to hear you again, and I'm going to miss you a lot. Thank you, pal. You sound like a youngie. And you've done such a good job. You sound like a youngie. How old are you? Oh, 45. Oh, no, that's not so young. But it's not so old, though, is it? No, no, Ah. not at all. Yeah. Not at all. But I was just thinking, you know, um, over all these years, you've had a lot of good people that you spoke to, a lot of wankers that you've had. And you've treated everyone with respect. Well, I think I have. Thank you very much for uh, understanding that. There and you some, like the uh, AFL? Like the RSL? AFL. Oh, the AFL. Why? Because you're being pushed and not heard. Oh, oh, oh boom, boom. <laughs> that's a that's a not a bad funny little joke, actually. But no, I thought I'd put a that. joke in for your last night. Yeah, but beautiful. after midnight, that's what will happen. Will be what? Push or hurt. I won't be pushed or hurt after midnight tonight, pal, that's for sure. With the AFL? Hmm. OK. What? Thanks, Bob. Uh, uh, yeah, OK. Thanks, mate. What the hell are we talking about? 26 minutes to uh, 11 o'clock. It's amazing. Some days I do understand everybody and sometimes I don't understand the nobody. <laughs> Hello, Robert. Uh, g- g'day. Oh, sorry, Robert. How you going, buddy? Good, mate. Um, I'm I'm recording you tonight, so... Um... <laughs> you, you, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, look, I, I look, congratulations. All these years, fantastic, buddy. I, I just thought I'd bring back a bit of... I know you love your nostalgia. Yeah. I've got some in front of me, because I collect... I've spoken to you once before. I collect historical radios and so forth from... Uh, from from 1924 right through to 1935. That's my interest. And I've right. collected a lot of stuff. But I was going through some stuff the other day, seeing it's your 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 last night, and I thought I'd just bring up these to see if you recognise it for my interest too, as well as a bit of interest for you. Yeah. I've got five DN. These are actual 10-inch LBs, and they're uh, the radio announcers' handheld commercials. And I've got here five DN Adelaide, first station in the state, established 1924, Hume Broadcasting Limited, Kingsway, in 78-inch. Kingsway 48 tracks 1, 2, 3 and 4. Arnott's Biscuits tracks uh, 16, 17 to 20. And Arnott's Mottam... These are all different albums. Yeah. Arnott's Mottam's Peanut Crunch. Arnott's Mottram. Yeah, Mottram, yes, yeah. sorry. Uh, and Lewis Berger commercials uh, tracks 1 to 2. And I just... 
you know, I just thought you'd not be interested to know that, you know, they have survived. You know, I've still got a 1957 recording on a 78 acetate of my first commercial that I ever made with Margaret Folds, who was then the boss's secretary, and myself doing a commercial for Cravens. Cravens was a, a, a department store uh, where Target is now, on the corner, Target, I mean, okay. uh, on the corner of uh, Pauley Street and, and, and Rundle Street. And golly, the comparison between that commercial and the quality and style of commercials that are read these days is just unbelievable. Yeah. So anyway, Robert, that's all I wanted to say. But I do want to finish off this. I've had a few, in your words, drinky poos tonight. I'm Good celebrating. <laughs> I've been listening to you for the last two or three nights. And uh, and uh, I just want to congratulate you on your 57 years of radio. It's one hell of a fantastic achievement because I am I love radio history. Thank you, mate. Uh, I've collected so much of the stuff, radio badges, club stuff. I've, I've got so much historical stuff. And, and What, do you, what uh, would you do with it? Well, I just have it around me, buddy. I yeah. just love it. It takes me back yeah. to the 1950s. I'm 63 years old now. Yeah. And I remember, you know, I've got, you know, when I hear things and, and I collect things, it takes me right back and it's also very special. You know, I yeah. uh, back into the Jeps Cross hostel huts and uh, oh, boy. My, parents, my parents playing and uh, listening to radio. That was the only form of entertainment we had back in the 50s. Of course. I, I observed... My well, when I first started in radio in 1957, there were just three commercial radio stations in town, 5AD, 5K and 5DN, and 5CL and 5AN, the ABC. And that's all that existed. Today, there's some 33 radio stations here. Correct, yeah. And I've got old uh, historical radios here from 1924 to, to 1934. And, in fact, I listened to you on uh, a 1932 air zone uh, radio that, we, you know, was manufactured in Sydney in 1930. With, with those tubes in the back and you have to wait till they warm up. Yes, they, they do, the old valve, uh, old valve radio. Yeah, yeah. But, look, honestly, buddy, you have left a special mark in radio history, especially especially you and me. Uh, 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 I hope I, I, you just enjoy your retirement. You bloody well earned it. Hope to hear you again somewhere again in Radio Land, if only for a few minutes in the future. From me, and I say from most of your radio listens, uh, especially those, especially those for some who have some sort of disability or for other reason are unable to contact you tonight. I say, wish you the very best, and. God bless, buddy. Thank you, Robert and Peters. Nice to talk to you. Uh, I must say, there's been a lot of people trying to get through and uh, trying to get through by email or by um, um, other forms of electronic media to say, I can't get through. I'm sorry. The board has been in meltdown tonight, and although there's only an hour and 20 minutes to go, and I think the last 15 minutes will be uh, a, a montage of a whole batch of of uh, nice little sayings from some very famous people. Uh, so don't put your uh, radio away. Keep listening, folks. 8223-0000. Hi, Ray. And to Anna, who was in the uh, audio there. That's all, just Anna and moi. <laughs> Anna and moi. <laughs> I missed you at the coffee shop today. Oh, he took off four minutes ago. I said, where are the bloody hell's he going? He's gone to, he's gone to the market. You, you travel all the way to market from North Adelaide on the gopher. No, 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 I went to the... Well, while well, it's cold, uh, my wife and I go in our car and, oh, I, take, okay. and I take my little uh, portable buggy with me and I have a little buggy that just fits in the boot of the car, which is lovely. OK, so you've got two units. At, yeah. Uh, OK, that's, that's handy, isn't it? Fabulous. Yeah. When you retire, of course, Bob, I haven't retired yet. I'm years behind you, but ironically enough, I see a lot of my elders like yourself that moving on and life changes when you get the household i anticipate you have plenty to do around the house and things to do to a banner oh yeah you know and i suppose <laughs> he's such a handyman <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> by word of mouth <laughs> but you know the, the culture changes and the environment with it but you know anna it's yes. the one thing that bob bought his book out to uh, kiss my ass he bring one out that's under my skin you're a, uh, you're a pain in the bum or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let me get a follow-on. <laughs> yeah. So what, what, do you plan to do much more than anticipated? Is it going to be much more of a change? 
Mate, I, I haven't thought of anything. I, you know, I've just said, time to retire. I don't want to do anything. I, I can get up tomorrow morning now, not have to listen to the news, not have to read the paper, not have to do anything I don't want to do. I was supposed to get yourself a grey, greyhound dog, couldn't you? Oh, well, wow. I'd really love to do that, pig's bum. <laughs> uh, get a horse, have a trotter. Oh, what? A horse is too competitive now. <laughs> Maybe I should take up some art. I tell you what, do you like the uh, idea of looking at paintings may inspire you to actually pick up the brush? Maybe that's better, looking at paintings rather than doing it. Yeah. Well, Sir Allison, it's been very good to have you over the years. And... Uh, like all announcers, they all have their different uh, prerogatives to way they handle the audience and have the people in in the in the studio to uh, talk about not just the car show and finance and everything else. There's been a great variety, Bob, over the years. There's nothing been uh, dull and boring, but what does uh, affect us all at the moment is that uh, whoever's going to replace you has got to be something equal, equal or better. Uh, to carry out what you've done is going to be hard to replace. So all the best, mate. I wouldn't like the job. i tell you what, seeing it's your last time on the air, I remember having an argument with you on the air once and you you went away from me for about uh, six months. You said to me that all the ships down at Port Adelaide had ladders down the side of them. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, no. And I, I we, said bullshit. No, we, 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 had, we had health pubs in the house that time. It's, uh -huh. No, we, no, oh, we So you, you're agreeing with me, but you, you were a bit bonkos and you didn't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I remember that. <laughs> we argued and I said there's no such thing as ladders hanging off the edge of ships all the time. Well, I'll tell you something. Yeah. There, there, there actually is. Here we go again. Yeah, I know. Good night, you, Ray. You've got to go on to the internet. Good night, Ray. It means it's hard as we'll catch you, mate. Good night, Ray. See you. <laughs> Hello, Bobby. It's your illegitimate son, Pembo. As everybody knows, I am the biggest Beatles fan in the world and I have always envied you for not only bringing the Beatles to Adelaide, but for those two historical, life-changing days in June of 1964. You were... People don't know this. You were the closest person to the Beatles. You compared the concerts... You were the only person backstage with them back in the days when you could go backstage with them. That soon ended. You literally touched the hem of John Lennon's garment. And I will never forget, in 2004, on the 40th anniversary of the Beatles tour, there was this huge press conference at the Town Hall. Now, we're all standing out on the balcony where you had presented the Beatles to the biggest crowd they ever saw in their entire career in the world. The biggest crowd ever. So I got so caught up in the moment, I said to you, Bob, I thought about it and I thought, no, I'm going to do it. I said, Bob, I have never told you this before, but I really envy you to have not only been on this balcony, but to have spent two days in the inner sanctum of the greatest band in the history of the world, the Beatles. And I will never forget what you said. You said, Pembo, I could not give a stuff about the Beatles. This press conference is all about me. You are nothing if not brutally, crushingly honest. And 57 years later, on this the last week of your last show, Bob, it's all about you. Congratulations, Bob. 57 years on Adelaide Radio. All the best in your retirement. From 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. Pembo, what a great voice. Five double A. Yeah, I love that one. Five double A. Fifteen and a half minutes to eleven o'clock, eight double two three double O double. This is a lovely note. Thank you, Bob. You've provided a voice for many, including a little boy I care for who cannot talk nor hear. He will never hear the kind words and encouragement you gave him. You are a great advocate, and I appreciate the way in which you have embraced my, my cause in making his world a better place. Oh, isn't that lovely? <laughs> well, 40 and a half minutes to 11 o'clock. Hello, Dennis. Hi, Bob. Where can you buy a ticket that goes for 40 or 50 years and listen to you? Where can you buy a ticket? I don't think oh, the robot... About the 40, 50 years ago <laughs> when I started listening to you. Really? And you've been entertainment all the way. They're not available anymore, mate, are they? And they come for free. And you... I don't know who's going to replace you. I don't know. There's no one. There's no one left in the land. Bob, thanks very much. 
And I know that we, me and Lynn are going to hear from you, and I know you're going to sneak back <laughs> on the radio. Well, I don't late. know about that, but I tell you what, it's getting quarter to 11, and I can see and feel in the voices of people who are ringing that no, they, I know, they're all, they're, you. they've all had a few drinking weekies, and I yeah, wish I'd had a few drinking weekies. <laughs> just one thing. Please yeah. say hello to Shirley Bassey, my mummy-in-law. Shirley Bassey is your mother-in-law? Yes, Bassett. Yes, please. The real Shirley Bassey? No, no, Bassey. No, Bassett. Oh, Just Bassett. Shirley. Oh, Shirley. Hello, Bassett. Shirley Bassett, your mother-in-law. Hello, darling. Thanks, yeah. Bob. Will that make her feel better? Yes. Good on you, mate. 8223 0000. Bob Francis. a half to 11. I'm Bob Francis with you on the final night forever, forever after 57 years. Hello, Sam. Uh, Bob, how yes, are sir. you? Good, thank you. Now, listen, you, I want you to promise me something. Tell me. Uh, you stop calling me fat and I'll stop calling you SpongeBob. Ah, Samo. Samo from North Adelaide who fixes my keys and does my writing on signs and all that. I don't mind you calling me SpongeBob. I love it. He walks, he walks, <laughs> he walks into Kachina every morning and I yell out, Fatso! And he goes, Spongeo. <laughs> no, everybody has that. a good laugh out of that. Yeah, no, they look, do. Bob, Bob, in all seriousness, look, to last 57 years in any, any field whatsoever, whether it be sport or uh, any profession, uh, you certainly a credit to uh, uh, your profession, and um, I just want to wish you all the best in your retirement, and I hope uh, um, you really have a wonderful retirement and a long, healthy one as well. So. Thank you, mate. I, I didn't realise that you listened to my program, you know. I suppose you'd be one of those things who just listens every night, uh, uh, but never gave rings. Me, somebody gave me a few bucks to listen. I wouldn't uh. normally. So. <laughs> But I tell you what, our little coffee lounge next door is bloody beautiful, isn't it? Our little restaurant. Oh, it's, it's amazing. We've got a good little setup happening there, and yeah. uh, uh, it's good, you know. Everybody gets along well. This and is a we free a woofka. A, have a, have a, <laughs> and listen, tell that lovely wife of yours, Anna, to come and pick up her shoes. Hi, Sam. Uh, I'll be there in the morning. Oh, she's here. I, I, need, I, need to get, I need to get paid for them. Oh, I, yeah. I, can't, I can't carry that over for too long. <laughs> okay, see you in the morning, Sam. Good idea, okay, Fatso. Well, See you, Sponge. <laughs> See you, mate. Bye. Eight double two three double oh double oh. I think the board is just jam packed full. Leighton's calling from. You've done it three times this week. Calling direct from Tokyo. <laughs> H- Hello, Leighton. You want to get your last bit in here? The last hour. It's only what about twenty past ten in Tokyo this morning. How many earthquakes have you had? Uh, today we've only had about six. Oh, is that all? Oh, bad luck. And what's happening um, with what's happening with that water leaking out of Fukushima at the moment? Yes, yeah, we're getting big it. headlines here. Water leaking out of Fukushima and it's going into the bloody Pacific. Um, what's up there? Pacific Atlantic. Pacific. Yeah, Pacific. Pacific yeah. yeah, it's a little bit of a concern, I think. You know, they're, they're saying something like uh, three thousand, the equivalent of about three thousand barrels uh, a day are going out. So, uh, yeah, it's a fair amount. Yeah, uh, but. Um, uh, well, are, are they are they saying you know scary scary time or uh, don't go into the water or uh, not 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 in so many words. Yeah. But, um, we'll probably try not to scare everybody. So uh, we just have to because uh, the Japanese can... are not that type of people, are they? They'd rather probably just see it uh, floating in there and they won't say anything about it until they try and fix it up without telling anybody. And, and when it does happen, they go, oh, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, true, that's true. Now, Bob, I did actually send an email through earlier, which apparently you didn't get. No. Uh, so I've resent it back through to Andrew. Um, but I've got a little poem here that I'd like to uh, read out, if I may. How long does it go for? Uh, uh, probably less than uh, 60 seconds. Got me, smooth talker. OK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's your last night, Bob, we sadly have to say. 57 years on, and you've had your day. We will all miss you, and that's for sure. Your character and manner, we will hear no more. I think it's fair to say you added a, I added a dimension. However, not always, it was perfection. 
We listen to the regulars like Tommy, Gary, Laurie, only naming a few not to give you a worry. And now, Bob, you can and will do what you like, unfortunately on your gopher and not your Harley bike. But now all you have the time that you need. Go do it, Bob. Don't turn to seed. The future ahead is about you and your life. So don't blow it, Bob. Go and have some fun with your wife. Happy retirement, sir. And don't play in the rain. Otherwise, we shall have to call you the dick brain. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> My wife thinks it's good. I give you a zero out of ten. <laughs> Thank you, Leighton. Konnichiwa. Arigato. All the very best, Bob. Thank you, mate. And thanks for talking to me. He, he's uh, he's running on a very regular basis to try and tell me and teach me all the eccentricities of the Japanese people's behaviour uh, in in Tokyo. And it's nice to hear. But every week, every week, they have, I don't know, how many hundreds of earthquakes. I wouldn't want to live there for a bloody billion dollars. Hello, Peter. Bob. Yes, Peter. Peter, bus driver. Oh, you mentioned, you, you gave me a little note earlier on saying you couldn't get through. That's right. Well, I tried... Well, bloody I've stiff cheese. Now you've been, I bet you've been trying a hundred times, have you? I've, I've tried so long, uh, unbelievable, and I managed to get through to Andrew when some dick brain, the, the person that you thought was Blakey, with Blakey's voice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I thought it was Blakey as well. Yeah. And, uh, look, it's nice to know that on your very last night that you've still got the wankers ringing up, otherwise it wouldn't <laughs> be a good show, would wouldn't, it? Wouldn't it wouldn't have been my show, would it? It, it wouldn't, yeah. would it? But we only had I two did... out of the bloody hundreds with the heads yeah. of it, so it's, yeah. you know, it's a I pity they've all things. disappeared. <laughs> Yeah, I brought a few things down here, Bobby. Won't take me too long. Um, we first met, or we first went on air together when we had a, an on air pop quiz. Do you remember that? An on air pop quiz? Yeah, I remember that a long time ago. And, and it was a long time ago. I think it was about 1983. Yeah. And we asked each other a question each week, and uh, whoever was going to win, the, the loser would have to treat them to a meal, if you remember. Yeah. And you treat. Me, because I won. Oh, at the Hilton Hotel. Exactly, and yeah. not, not the one, not the one on Burbridge Road either. No, I remember. <laughs> I remember. That yeah, came out of my pocket. That wasn't. That wasn't a woofer either. No, I know. <laughs> I know it came out of your pocket. It, it, you, you tricked me, my wife, yeah. and my mother. My mum yeah. who was over here on holiday. Oh, I remember. And Bloody remember pommy the, bastard. I know. Do you remember the? Do you remember the question I got you on? No. You didn't know the answer. I said, "Name the Bee Gees." Name them, and, you, and I didn't know that. Oh, you, you want to? No. You, uh, you want to be mentioned the fourth one, the fifth one, the fifth you, one. You, you said you said Barry, Robin, yeah. and Morris Gibb, and I said yeah. Who are the other two? And you said there aren't two more. And I said, don't let me prove it to you. It was Andy, Vin, Vince. No, Vince Maloney. Vince Maloney. Yeah, and Colin Peterson. Get off. They were, the, they, were the, they were the original Bee Gees. The oh, Bee Gees. Yeah, the, the, as a band. The, as, Colin as a Pierce band, played, yeah. the, played the drums and yeah. Vince Maloney did something, I remember, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was originally Bob. in Queensland when, so the, when they were 10-year-old kids. Yeah, but... Ah, no, but they not the bloody Bee Gees, but you won the dinner, didn't you? Yeah, of course I did. It was very nice <laughs> as well. Listen, you always let me um, you always let me defend STA and Trans Adelaide when people would ring up bagging us. Yeah. So you'd always let me get on and, and give me my perspective. Um, you were very helpful once when you came over to the St Agnes bus depot on an open day, which was for cancer. You were, you appeared there on the day, which we appreciated. You also have the distinction of being one of very few people to drive the Oban. I, I was just going to say to you, thank you for letting me drive the Oban. I, 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 I remember that. You said, come on, sit in the, in the thing. And I sat in the chair and I drove it for a while. It was bloody beautiful. I just put here, you jumped in the seat and took the wheel for about four kilometres. Yeah, it was great. Um, it, it's too late now if anybody wants to get me for that because that's, that's, long, that, that's long gone. Yeah. Um, as you know, I'm back on the buses now with, with Southlink after Are you? six years. Oh, yeah, right. I've been back seven years now on the buses. Wow. I was six years in the taxi game. Uh, when Trans Adelaide lost the contract to the private tender, Circo and Torrens, I couldn't get a Guernsey. I uh, don't know why. Yeah. Uh, but I've recently found out that you were probably to blame. <laughs> why? Uh, the new company said no. He's, he's a bit of a he's a bit of a controversial guy. He's always on the radio with Bob Francis. Oh, really? And, and that caused the problems. Well, mate, I, that's mate, what someone Pete, said. Peter, I'd love to give you plenty more time, mate. I just, I just don't have the time because I'm. Just... <laughs> 
<laughs> Pardon me. Uh, I'm loaded with bloody commercials and I just have to go to another commercial break for the very last bloody time. Bob's who you call when you've something to say or if you've just had a really bad day. No topics to boo, no issues too hot. Spend 25 cents and give it a shot. Call Bob. Big Bad Bob, 1395, Adelaide's 5AA, with Bob Francis. Uh, thank you, Johnny Blake, for uh, for recording that song. That's just been a, been a, the absolute ripper for me in the program. Oh, look who's walked to the studio, my producer, Andrew. Hello, yeah, good day, Bob. Lovely to see you. Yeah, lovely to see you too. Yeah, the reason I'm, to I'm in the studio is because there's no calls. Oh, yeah. No, very, very quiet Bullshit. night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody who's called in tonight and also sitting in emails and faxes and all this sort of business and SMSs. Uh, apparently, Bob Brown down in Tasmania is pu- pulling his hair out at the moment. They're spending all the money. Cho- chopping the down wood. all the, the rainforest <laughs> to, to make way for all the, uh, the, the paper, for all the SMSs and emails coming in tonight for you to say goodbye. Uh, so, lots of those coming through. Unfortunately, for obvious reasons, you haven't been able to read them. I'm sorry. They're, they're all, but I'll, I'll take them home and, uh, and read them. They're, yeah. they're, some of them are really fantastic. Yeah. Bob, final hour of the program. Um, just want to wish you the best for the next hour. Also the best to you and Anna and your family for the future. Thank you very much for being uh, being there. As I, I've, I've got nothing to say. There's so many things I want to say to you. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, you and... We, we've had an interesting last few years, a great few years. It's been we, a, a we bit get on of really very well together. Though, well, we? no we, crap, we, we don't. We, 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 <laughs> we, we, we actually hate each other's uh, guts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a very much. It's, it's been a, a temp, tempestuous sort of uh, relationship. Tempestuous. Yeah, that one too. Yeah. No, it's been. No, mate, to be honest with you, it's been very good. It's been one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. You know, I learned yeah. so much from you. And you, you've oh, become a good man. Thing. What have you learned from? Uh, don't believe my own bullshit. <laughs> yeah, which I'm talking now. That's, look, it. I, I, That's I, a good one. Look, look <laughs> it, it's funny. At the end of it all, um, just thank you. Thanks, uh, mate. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you, mate. All right, look after yourself. Thank you, Andrew. We're going to miss you. Andrew you. Ryman, mm. my producer, has been great. Yeah, Eight minutes yeah. past 11 o'clock. Eight double two three double o double o. Who's talking? Who's talking while I'm in the studio and talking? I'm talking. Now we should talk while I'm talking. Was that somebody walking out the door? Was that my producer walking out there? There's people having a chat out in the bloody control room out there. G'day, Grumpy. Is that the Mr yeah. and Mrs Francis hour? You're still alive. Hi, Grumpy. Hey, Hi, darling. <laughs> Can I just say that, so before I get to you, Bob, that Anna, you're the most beautiful girl in the world. Thank you, Grumpy. Isn't that there it? you go. Now, and, over and you're, to you, you're right. You're right, Grumps. She is. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow. Um, Grumps used to be my chauffeur. Anyhow, yeah. I thought of getting you something, a gift of some description, and I've uh, really yeah. worked it all out now. Uh-huh. I haven't tied up the loose ends, but I think I can. But I reckon I'm going to get you some golf lessons by John from Brompton. <laughs> It'll be called Up Close and Personal. <laughs> John, show you John, John's wheel. gay. John's gay, and, uh, and he's he's just <laughs> taking a whole bunch of gay people over to, to Tasmania. And he came on the air, and he wanted to get to a whole group of other people. So he must be having a good time over there. But oh I'd, yes, I'd love to have a gay with him. <laughs> I think you would. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. No, good on you, Bob, and just relax when you. Uh, when you uh, look after tonight, just relax, mate. You think I should just take do it what you want to do? Well, look after Anna. I put a thing on the uh, uh, five double A Facebook that you should buy Anna flowers and chocolates every week. He just about does that, Grumpy. Well, he should me. just keep it happening. That's the <laughs> main thing. You've been a, a, a delightful friend, mate. You've uh, always worked well. And I'm sorry that uh, uh, the sickness has got to you and stuffed your we legs. We miss and, you, Grumpy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I used to love re- being able to ring up at uh, uh, 6 o'clock on a Saturday night and go, you're working tonight, Grumpy? Come pick me up at quarter past six. <laughs> Gabunga, he's there with the door open. Lovely. I yeah, love but, that sort of service. But, but uh, no, no, you've done good and all that. and uh, More good stuff to happen, mate. You made people laugh. You made them cry. And uh, it's good stuff. Thanks, Grum. See you then. Look forward to you, pal. Bye, mate. Bye, Bye, mate. Bye. Hi, this is Brian Cad. Remembering with horror the many days and nights and lunches and drinks that I've had with this horrifying man over my life. He's always been a great friend of Australian music, 
and uh, to the people of Adelaide. One of my favourite stories about Bob was quite recent. It was only in the last few years, and we were having we had lunch in North Adelaide, dispute restaurant, and <clears throat> and fortunately it was on ground level because Bobby was in his gopher and. The end of this raucous lunch, all of a sudden he shook everyone's hand. He said, OK, I'm off now. See you later, Caddy. And he, he pounded out the door and straight onto the footpath, turned right and headed down about as fast as that thing could go. People jumping out all over the place to get from being run over. And I thought, even in a state of, of reasonable immobility, he's still a dangerous man to be around. Congratulations, Bob. 57 years on Adelaide Radio. All the best in your retirement. From 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. Thank you, Caddy. You're sounding older than I am, and I reckon you're younger than me. It'll just hurt a little. Dare to call. Big Bob Francis. Bob, how you Ralphie Hadzik, my mate. Good. Day. Thank you for organising that situation with uh, uh, Johnny Young and Johnny the boys. Young. It was just great. Oh, mate. Uh, I, look, I, couldn't, every... I couldn't hear it clear, but I knew what we were doing, and uh, it was lovely talking to John. I have to, gee, I haven't talked to him for 40 years. Well, mate, there were uh, two and a bit thousand people in the festival theatre hanging off every word, <laughs> and uh, they were just enjoying it immensely. We're still in the foyer with uh, all of the stars of the show signing autographs. Are you, and, still, uh, are you still down there? Because Normie yeah. Rose said to come and have a drink afterwards. And I said, oh, yeah. I, well, I, we'll I said, be, I don't we'll, drink. Okay. We'll be at the secret location. Right. <laughs> <laughs> at and midnight. The 20-plus 20, the, the 20 club has reopened just for oh, tonight. Beautiful. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, everybody's uh, uh, high on, on a great show. Colin Hewitt uh, closed the first half and absolutely knocked them out. Beautiful. Uh, it was just fantastic. Normie... Uh, 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 finished the uh, second half of the show, and then the whole cast joined in for Land of a Thousand Dances. And uh, it was just absolutely magic. And, and I, I'm so pleased because, you know, we saw these guys in the 70s, and, and I don't want to, you know, give things away, but, you know, Axiom did do a, a song called Arkansas Grass. And, uh, uh, and and it's nice to know that the dressing rooms didn't smell like anything tonight other than Denka rub. <laughs> <laughs> the old bastards. <laughs> give my regards, mate. If I don't make it tonight after the drinks we're, we're having here, but uh, uh, well, th 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 those guys are part of my my beginning in, in radio and they were just fantastic and and may i just say a heartfelt thank you uh from from me to you for all the support you've given me in south australia over the years you've been a tremendous mentor and uh, a great friend and i thank you sincerely oh uh, life is a cabin eh? what's the telephone number <laughs> we better do one, one last wolf, yeah? <laughs> Oh, look, they're going to kill me. 8362 <laughs> 884. Never forget my own phone number. Uh, I've forgotten my birthday, but I don't forget my phone number. <laughs> mate, all the very best. I know I'm going to see you for coffees and of things. Of course you are. Yeah. So, mate, just have a, a wonderful time and, and thank you for all of the entertainment for all of the years. Thank you, Ralphie. And, you know, you've always been a good talker. You can always. That's the original fat cat. He was the fat cat who came on and never spoke and you wouldn't want to hear him speak because he's got a Yankee bloody accent. You know, the past 27 years I've been talking with my next guest and we reckon a lot of people are still alive today because of what we've discussed over that time. Firstly, we spoke about the Clipsal safety switch from 1985 to 2003. Boy, that went really well. And uh, since 2005, we've been telling you about the fantastic product called the Care Alert Smart Dialer. Well, for the final time, we're going to talk again with Mike Steele, who's bought us so many wonderful life-saving products with easy telephone numbers to remember to go buy the bloody things. To all Australians, <laughs> and tonight he's going to tell us how you might be eligible to have a free... Did you hear that, folks? Have a free Care Alert Smart Dialer. Hi, Mike. Good evening for the last and final time to you, Bob. Mate, it's <laughs> going to be a sad time. You're always, well, you're always good with the gab, and boy, you've had some good pieces of equipment to sell. Oh, 
right, Bob. It, it, it has been a good run for us. And, and what we didn't uh, tell you, those cameras. Remember those, those we had the cam- cameras. Yeah. That, that's right. I mean, they were great. We had the surge arresters, and I always remember Baz and Tilco making fun of those things. We used to talk about them on radio, and they'd say it sounded like a, a, an Italian policeman. <laughs> um, you know, and we had the smoke alarms. We did a lot together over many, many years, Bob. It'll be uh, it'll be sad not to be talking to you. I must say this. I know a lot of people are saying, you know, they're going to miss you and everything, and, and we certainly are going to miss the, the dulcet tones of Bob on the radio. But one thing from a business point of view, Bob, is that, you know, I talk to a lot of radio personalities around Australia, and uh, a lot of them are good. Uh, some of them are terrific, and some are absolutely brilliant. You're right up there at the top because you know why? You take an interest in people like us that are running just small family businesses, and you really yeah. give us a leg up, and you help us, and you you, you, you show a genuine interest in our product and what in, and in what we say, and that's come across <laughs> over the last 27 years, mate. Well, that's a great item, mate. Uh, well, the Carol at Smart Dialer, it's another great product, and the fact that you uh, could get one for free is absolutely brilliant. How do you qualify for the free one? Free well, look, Carol it's, it's, Smart it's, Dialer. It's not often that we give accolades to the government, but the state government has come out with a rebate system that if you're over 75 years of age, um, if you're a resident, obviously, of South Australia, if you have a risk of falling over or perhaps need a, a, a you know, have a medical ailment where emergency assistance could be required and you live on your own or you don't have to live on your own. A lot of people ring up and say, look, I, I live with my husband, but he's not in any position to be able to help me because he's fairly, you know, incapacitated himself. In those circumstances, Bob, and if you've got a, a valid pension card or concession card, you could actually, and you tick all those boxes, you can actually get one of these for free because what will happen, of course, the government, you, you fill out the application form, you get your doctor to sign it, you send it, and the government can give you approval if you meet that criteria to have a free care alert smart dial. That's great. Just explain how they work quickly. OK, very quickly, if you get in your, yourself into any strife whatsoever, you, you fall over, you, you hurt yourself, you hear an intruder trying to break in, you just press those little red buttons on the pendant, can't accidentally be set off either, it's a deliberate action. The smart dialer starts dialing out to up to five numbers of your choice, including triple zero, that you need help. Uh, enough to get rid of any would-be intruders because it sounds a little alarm, and you've got peace of mind on its way. Person coming to the rescue could be the ambulance, but the bottom line is no monitoring fees, and that's what people absolutely love. Bob. Well, that's one of the uh, the, the answers to my next question: Why are more people buying a Care Alert Smart than the other brand? Well, in the rebate system, of course, they're buying the Care Alert Smart dollar because you know the rebate system allows you it will pay some form of money towards a monitoring system. But the problem is when that rebate system ends, Bob, guess what? The person that's got a monitored system is going to end up paying that three hundred and something dollars a year. So yeah. people are working it out. They're not silly. Your listeners are very smart. They're very very clever. They've worked it out. I'm getting the Care Alert Smart Dial. It's the most trusted, non-monitored brand in Australia. And when the rebate system ends, I don't pay one red cent. So that's why they're getting us. Good on you, mate. Uh, now, how do they go about getting one of these great products? Hopefully well, look, for uh, free. Yeah, this is it. If, if you want to go to... This is the website I'm going to direct everybody to. You can either go to ours, which is carealert.com.au. You'll see a little section there about the rebate scheme. You can click on that. Or you can go to Rebate SA, that stands for South Australia, so Rebate SA, all one word, .com.au. Download the application form. You can see that sitting there. You can download that uh, and uh, you can fill it out and, and away you go. Or call us in the morning. You don't have to do it now. It's 1300, and we all know this number, Bob, 1300 75 85 95. Easy, 1300. Easy. It is easy. Just think of our ages. You're not quite there yet, Bob. 1300, <laughs> 75, 85, 95. We'll post out a form to anyone. Just meant to say you heard it on Bob's show, the last final Bob show, mate. And uh, we'll try and get as many free ones out there into people that meet that uh, criteria as we can. Thank you, Mike. And, and love to Ruth. Try to go to rebatesa.com.au, download your application form, or call us on 1300 75 85 95, and we can post you out a form. Michael, all the best. Merry Christmas. And you, you too. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. All the best to you and your family and uh, Anna and everybody there. We are very, very thankful we've had you on the airways for 27 years, mate. Thank you, mate. See you, pal. Bye. Big Bad Bob. Fatty Francis. Steve with him. A lot of it is um, probably not really suitable for radio. However... One that I can relate is regarding the 5 o'clock Friday night sessions 
in Fatty's office for the drinks. They were just something else again, always crowded. But then there was always a downside because then Bob would always go on the wagon for about three months. So that five o'clock Friday night, door locked, and he would be like a bear with a sore head for three months around the studio. So we could not wait until he unlocked that door on five o'clock on a Friday and the drink sessions started all over again. It was good fun. It made us been a stellar career from the Beatles through 5AD, through AA. You are the man, no question. Good luck in retirement. Love you. Steve Whittam, signing off. Cheers, mate. Congratulations, Bob. 57 years on Adelaide Radio. All the best in your retirement. From 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. Get interactive now. Email on air at 5AA.com.au. 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. It's just on 26 and a half minutes past 11 o'clock. Hey, Steve. Big Bob, how you going, mate? All, all right. right. All right, mate. That's good. Yeah, I used to uh, ring you quite a bit, mate. I uh, haven't rung you for a while. Why? Oh, I don't know. Just uh, haven't quite got around to it. Discovered the SMS, probably. <laughs> <laughs> what made you get around to it tonight? Oh, I just uh, wanted to, you know, so I used to have a few Barneys. Just make sure everything's sweet with us. Beautiful. Yeah, Absolutely. Used... Everything's fine. Yeah, you used to love to uh, get you mad. <laughs> yeah, but you did it on purpose, though, didn't you? Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and the best way to do that was politics. That was your... Uh, that was yeah, your, to, uh, to go against what I, what I went along with, exactly right. Yeah. Could I just say, maybe you're more, not so much pro-liberal as anti-Labor. Oh, yeah. I'm so bloody anti-Labor down the bloody road, you wouldn't believe. Yes, as soon as this I... bloody government gets kicked right up the guyber, the better. Yeah, well, mate... I think that uh, means I vote Liberal. Yes, <laughs> I think you certainly do, yes. Um, <laughs> so what, mate, you still uh, you still drinking these days? Do you no, have the odd one? Having a drink for eight years. Oh, eight you years. might have to... Uh, you might have to... Uh, have a little celebration one, uh, mate. It was like giving up cigarettes, mate. I gave cigarettes up overnight same with booze and and after i i must have spoke 100 a day and now i can't stand the smell or the being anywhere near cigarettes and with booze yeah. i don't mind people drinking but uh, i really don't mind going to a party and getting everybody getting drunk and i'll just sit there and have my diet coke and enjoy it yeah no no thought just having one just a N- no, little one no I, I, yeah. occasionally i might have uh, a baby's irish cream uh, on uh, on you know crushed ice yeah uh, but even then that Tastes like booze. <laughs> it puts yeah. me off. Oh, fair enough, mate. So, what are you going to be anonymous now? Are we ever going to see you anywhere or anything? Well, I don't know. It depends on if anybody invites me to come. Like, there's no more money coming in. That's from uh, midnight tonight, pal. Uh, so, yeah. I live on my superannuation. And after that, we'll see how long we can go for, for no money coming in. And then uh, it'll depend who offers me what. And I certainly, to find another job like I've had, like this one, mate, is going to be very, very, very hard. Oh, that's good, mate. Is Anna still there with you at the moment? Sue? Is Anna still yeah, there yeah, with yeah. you at the moment? She's still yeah, there, yeah. yeah. she's here. I've seen, I've seen a present to the station. You didn't get it from Steve? We haven't been able to open... We haven't had an opportunity to open the presents yet. Oh, what? you haven't? No. Oh, did you oh. Did you send us a present, did you? Yeah, I've sent you a present. You, you didn't get it? Oh, I'm Steve? sorry, mate. We probably have, but it's, you know, there's been a pile of things... Uh, that Natalie on the switchboard has said is still there and there's booze and everything. Uh, we'll come oh. and pick it up tomorrow. You know what it was? What is it? A uh, bread and butter sandwich. Uh, <laughs> Fuddy. <laughs> now, 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 people, people I, I've got to explain this. You know, over, over the years, there's been young people for a period of time, it's got to be 20 years ago now, young kids would ring up, talk about something sensible, and then just the middle of nowhere would come up with the, with the word bread and butter sandwiches. Yeah, and mate, every, that was... <laughs> That was me quite often. <laughs> and it was just a bunch of people who just wanted to see if they could get the word bread and butter sandwiches. Why? Yeah. I have no bloody idea. <laughs> so bloody stupid. And don't you feel sorry that you ever did it? Ah, oh, it was all getting you mad, mate. All <laughs> <laughs> that really got me mad. I uh, pass <laughs> off. <laughs> all right, Steve, thank you very much, mate. 29 and a half minutes to, uh, to 12 o'clock. Hello, Grant. Yeah, how are you, Bob? Good Nana? Back. How are you, Grant? She's here, yep. Good, good, thanks. Bob, yeah, just a quick one to, to say it's going to be sad to see you go. Um, and, yeah, basically going to gonna miss, your, miss your voice and your... Uh, and what, what, what are you actually going to do when, you've, uh, when you finish, Bob? 
uh, sit around and watch telly. I uh, bet you, I bet you, any money you like, you'll have a direct link to your phone with a dump button on it. <laughs> uh, that, that'd be nice. I think I'll, I'll probably call Talkback every now and again because I, yeah, I really, I, be I, I, I will have a comment to make about something going on. And well, you know, the, the one thing I wish for more than anything in the world from tonight is for Kevin Rudd to lose the next election by oh, the most definitely. amazing bloody figures that we definitely. have about four bloody Labor Party people left in the world. You'll have to you'll have to ring up every now and again, Bob, because. Um, my, uh, I started listening to you many years ago, and I think, uh, I think it was Five AA when Paul Makem used to be on it as well. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's how long I've been listening to you. So that's yeah, that'd be that'd be years. And my uh, three-year-old daughter, the first night she came home from hospital, she from that day on, she uh, she actually used to go to sleep with you. Beautiful. And now when she hears your voice. It's Bob, 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 and she'll even turn the radio on. How old is she now? Three. Beautiful. And she's, uh, she'll, she'll go and turn the radio on and say, Bob, 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 Bob. <laughs> so you've got, you've got your youngest listener. Thank you, Grant. And no thank, worries. And you thank take you for, care. Thank you for listening all those years. No, that's fine. Thank you, mate. Bye. All right, mate. Bye. Well, this is supposed to be a surprise. My son has rung me from New York. Hey, mate. Hey, your dad. <laughs> hey, what's, what's the dad bit? You call me Pops. Oh, I thought I'd go with dad for your <laughs> last show. I, I love the comment. <laughs> love the comment you made uh, in, in the montage we played at the uh, uh, the farewell at five o'clock tonight was, um, uh, what does Dick Brain mean explaining it to Americans? And you said, next call, please. <laughs> next, next call, please, yeah. Well, it's funny. You know, I'll, I'll tell everybody here who you are and, and, uh, and this, you know, this illustrious career, the story career, and he brought the Beatles to Adelaide, and, and I'm, I'm ready to tell them all about these stories, and they'll, they'll hear the clip of the old lady and, and the, the Dick Brain and go, what, 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 what is a Dick Brain? <laughs> What uh, Americans don't swear very much, do they? Don't, don't swear. So it's taken. No, they don't swear like Australians swear. Well, certainly not on the air. I mean, we couldn't get away with no. half the <laughs> half the words that, that you get away with. <laughs> My, the, but, uh, sorry, sorry, I couldn't be there for uh, for your final night. I know I'm getting some good uh, uh, some good representation. Beck was there, and Anna's there, and send the send the send my love. I heard, she's here, but she, she, you can talk to her. How are you, Mark? Hello, darling. Thanks for ringing. It means a lot to us. I'm glad you uh, finally got to uh, see how a studio works. Yes, finally. It's very much first time interesting. She's, <laughs> first time she's been in the studio. Mate, the... Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know what I was going to say. You've surprised me. Yeah. It's good. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going I'm, I'm to miss... Uh, you, know, it's, uh, you know, I came here 30 years ago, um, you know, on a, on a, on a four-week holiday and, and never went back to Adelaide. And uh, with you know, all intentions of never, never getting into radio, uh, and had no desire to get into radio whatsoever. And uh, here I am, thirty years later, uh, having a thirty-year a career in radio in, uh, in I, New York. I remember that day you rang me from New York, <laughs> saying, "I love this place. So I'm going to stay here forever." And I went, "Yeah, sure you are." <laughs> <laughs> and you started working at WNEW, where Rock lives. Yeah. What was the guy's name you produced for, the, 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 the jock? Yeah. Yeah, Scott Beauty. Scott Beauty, uh, that's right. One of, one of the legendary jocks and, in, and he was a lovely, in America. Yeah, he was a lovely guy. I, I enjoyed meeting him. And it, it was the uh, where Rock lives was, was your uh, uh, your sort of signature uh, sign for the station. Yeah, well, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I, I sort of accidentally fell into this, uh, this, this radio station, which happened to be... Uh, the the biggest rock station in the country for yeah. for the, the late eighties and nineties, and it was just a it was an incredible you know, it was a, a, a great experience, and it certainly got me addicted to being in the business. And but I think there was I think I, I think it was a little in the blood before I uh, before yeah. I even got here, as much as I didn't want to get into it. Uh, but with that uh, came the the award, and what amazed me when you said I made it to the front page of Rolling Stone magazine. I mean, the, 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 the star, well, the, the station won the award of the best rock station in the world, like Americans always do. They they win the best in the world, not the best in America. And uh, the whole staff got their photograph on the front page of Rolling Stone. I was proudly walking around saying, "My son's on the front page of the Rolling Stone." It was great. That's when he got finally got the Doctor John song. The uh... On the cover of the Rolling Stone, yeah, yeah, yeah right. 
But it's also, yeah, it's also been, uh, you know, being away from family for 30 years, I've also had, uh, it, you know, because of the internet, the opportunity to just, you know, click a button and, uh, and hear you every day. And it's, it's, uh, you know, not many people can, can hear four hours of their family life every day and what's going on. And I guess, uh, now I'm just going to have to call you. Exactly. <laughs> and, and you can do that more often. Like your phone bill is much cheaper than mine. <laughs> yes, yes. Of course, people don't know how, how uh, our uh, phone conversations go, which is more like, uh, uh, "Hey, pops. Hey, kiddo. How you doing? Uh, okay, what's going on? Nice Nothing. day. How what weather? Yeah. All right, love you. Bye. <laughs> I call him once every three months in the, in the early days, and I go, "Guess what happened?" And he goes, "What? I got nothing. Nothing." <laughs> And that's, okay, the, that's, the end of, <laughs> that's the end of the conversation. Uh, uh, Mark, th- thank you for calling, mate. Uh, say love, love to you, love, love congratulations. To, and thanks, mate. Love, love, love to Mary. And we'll see you soon. See you, pal. Okay. He was going to come down, apparently. Yeah. Uh, he was thinking yeah. about sort of getting down. That, that would have been a real surprise. I surprised him for his 21st birthday. I remember. Uh, I, I flew yeah. to New York, New York for a week. I, it, was, it was August 29th, so July 29th. I remember it was the Prince Alfred Old Collegian's uh, dinner. And I got so smashed. I went home at 2 o'clock in the morning and I said, it's Mark's 20th birthday, 31st birthday. I'm flying to New York in the morning. And I went around to Pan American, bought the ticket, flew to New York the following morning, and I was back by Monday. <laughs> uh, and that was a woofka. <laughs> it was a good one. 22 and a half minutes to 12 o'clock. 8223 0000. Now, where am I? I got lost there for a second. Yes, it's time for one of the. Shall I play this now? Yes, it will. Big Bad Bob. Hi, this is Glenn Wheatley. Bob, I just want to wish you all the best and uh, thank you for all your help with the Masters Apprentices in those halcyon days of the 60s and 70s. Darling Fatty, this is Wilsey. You are an absolute legend. You are really a generous performer. You always gave me lines to run with to hopefully get a laugh. I love you very much, Fatty. Hi, this is Cole Joy speaking to Bob Francis. 57 years in the broadcast industry on radio. Strike me lucky. (laughs) I didn't even think you'd live that long, Bob, to tell you the truth. Hi, Jeremy Cordo. Bob, congratulations. I never thought in a million years you were going to retire. I've always had great respect for you. I love you dearly, and I thank you for all the hours of entertainment you've given. Hey, Bob, it's Koshi here from Sunrise. Mate, all the best in retirement. You've worked your backside off. You have stirred the pot for over 50 years. Hello, I'm John Lord. Well, Bob, 57 years. Not good enough, mate. I've done about 65. Dear, dear, dear. You young blokes, I can never work you out. G'day, this is Ray Hadley from Sydney Radio Station 2GB. Anyone who's stuck it out in this industry for 57 years deserves more than my congratulations. Bob Francis is without doubt a radio icon. Thank you, Bob Francis. I hope you have a long, healthy and happy retirement. Hey, it's Mark Francis here, Bob's son, and for many of my father's listeners, you know I've lived in New York for the last 30 years or so, but everyone here seems to have the same question. What exactly is a dick brain? I just tell him it's Australian for a next caller, please. Uh, this is Ian Chappell. Well, Fatty, they tell me you're retiring. I'm bloody staggered you lasted this long, mate. Uh, you were such a reprobated school. Mate, enjoy your retirement, and uh, it's been a terrific career you can be proud of it well done alan jones right across australia bob goodness me i'm exhausted 57 years in radio well i'll tell you what that is a record that won't be beaten. Congratulations. Hey, Bob, this is Chaz Bacciadolo from The Chaser. I can't believe it. Whenever we've had the sketch, which we can't end, we always call you up and you provide the punchline for us. You've always been a great sport and a lot of fun, and now we're going to have to try and be funny off our own bat. We are doomed. Hello, Bob. Oh, my gosh. This is Colleen Hewitt speaking. Bobby, you just have a lovely time with your own life now. Get into it. Love it. Smell the roses, mate. Love you. Hi. Darren Hinch here. Bob Francis. 57 years. And you almost got it right. After all that time, you almost got it right. But never mind, you old bugger. It's a pleasure to be on air and to say goodbye. Hello, this is Kamal. Bob Francis. I've known you for almost all of the time. 
And for whatever reason, I always refer to you as Farouk. Congratulations with your retirement. Hello, this is Neil Mitchell from 3AW. Well, Bob Francis, congratulations. From all of us from here at 3AW, I would like to wish you a long, happy, healthy retirement. We know there'll never be another Bob Francis, nor should there be. Hey, Bob, it's Russell Morris. Unbelievable. I hope you've got your gold watch. Just absolutely fantastic. I have some great memories of you, and we've had some great times, and congratulations. Love you. Every evening at 8, you can hear him arrive. He stands six feet tall, weighs 285. Big Bob. Big Bob. Big Bad Bob. Well, that's that's something rather special. I didn't think that we'd get the uh, and and thanks to Nick Nolan who's organised all those things to uh, to say goodbye to me, uh, to have Alan Jones and icons that I've grown up with, uh, John Laws and people like that to say farewell. Uh, that's r- rather something very special. Only eighteen minutes to go, folks. Eight double two three double o double o. Bob Francis. Oh boy. It's nearly time to go home and to say goodbye. Fifteen and a half minutes to twelve o'clock. Hello, Tony. Yeah, g'day, Bob. Yeah, look, um, th- thanks for all the uh, all that you've done on uh, TV, radio, and being an entertainer. So you're going to be uh, very sadly missed, mate. Thank you, mate. Ha- and um, I hope you enjoy your retirement with your lovely wife Anna, and just just enjoy life from uh, when you wake up. And, like, from your day's going to just be your day. So, yeah, thanks for the memories, mate. That's very nice. Thank you, Tony. Thanks for your comments. Appreciate it. See you, mate. Bye. Hello, Jim. Uh, how you going, Bob? Good, mate. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good to hear. You know, I've, um, I've called you a few times. I love debating with you and um, that's certain issues. I just want to hear your um, opinion on Tony Abbott lowering the company tax rate. <laughs> You want me to talk seriously? Go to buggery. Why? <laughs> couldn't, give no, a bu- couldn't give a bugger about the tax rate about Tony Abbott, about no, 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 Kevin Rudd, about it's, nothing. It's, 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 for the com- it's for the future of the country. I don't care. Why not? Because well, I'm you, going you, home and I'm finishing in about five minutes and you can go and stick it right up your bum. Goodbye. Hello, Deb. Hello, Deb. How are you? Good, Deb. Uh, congratulations on your retirement. I hope you relax and rest. Um, I'm a friend of Melly, and you will remember 11 years ago you took my son on your Harley at six years of age. I remember that. And he's now 16 in year 11, doing well. That's fantastic. And he wants to go into the police force. Good on him. That's, so thank that's, you for that, and thank you for the great time. And you probably won't remember, but on my grandparents' 89th anniversary, you rang them. I rang them to... You've asked me for special favours twice in your life. Yes, I have. Well, you bugger. <laughs> Thank you very much. Great listening to you and good luck to you and Anna. Thank you, dear. Thank you, bye. Good night, Deb. There's another Debbie. Hello, Debbie. Hello, Bob. It's Debbie from Mobu Heights. Hi, Debbie. I'm just wishing you good luck for the future to you and your wife. And I know I've only spoken to you a few times, but I was at the go show tonight so I would have liked to have heard your whole show, but... We you did yell out on the phone. Um, oh, you were part of the yelling out yeah. when, when Johnny Young was on stage? Yeah. That's, that's lovely. Yeah, so, um, yeah, you take care of yourself in the future and we're going to be sadly missed. And we're going to miss... No, I like to listen to you every night. Um, yeah, who, who, so, was the best, who was the best on the show tonight, Dal? Oh, boy. Um... I mean, even, even, yeah, for their age, they're, they're all damn good, aren't they? Oh, are they? Yeah. I've, yeah. Been to the la- I've been to every, every one that they've, they've had. Yeah, I went to the last one with that, eh? Yeah. Um, I think you were there the, the first year we were there. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, but they're fantastic. I hope they come back next year. But, yeah, but anyway, uh, just say, you know, have a happy retirement and take care of yourself and, yeah, it's going to be, going to miss you. Good on you, Debbie. Thank you, darling. No worries. And thank you then. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi, Mara. Hello. Yes, dear. How are you? Good. That's good. Yeah, Bob, I'd like to say three thank yous to you. Yeah. I'd like to say thank you for being you. On the radio, you were always straight up. I'd like to say thank you for not being Mr Labor Party. <laughs> <laughs> and most of all, thank you for bringing the best...
band in town in 1964. I was only seven years old, but I have learnt to be educated in music to know how good the Beatles were. You know, Thank you very I, I, much, I can't, Bob. I can't believe how how that has stayed on. I mean, oh, it's Bob, so you were awesome. long ago. Oh, mate, they are the... They are, oh, look, I love Elvis and I love the Beatles, and that's it. Beautiful. I was cleaning out uh, my office yesterday, and there's a, yeah. there's a big... Uh, there's a box... Uh, in the office, it's not much of a bloody office. Let me tell you, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's a box with a, a glass front, and inside is part of the uh, the steel and and rocks oh, that wow. were the Centennial Hall. Wow! Well, and it just my says, brother, Thanks, Bob, was, for being... he actually went to Centennial Hall. Yeah, yeah, and and yeah, because he's nine years older than me. I'm fifty. I'm nearly fifty six. Yeah, and yeah, and he just kept bragging. Oh, the Beatles are great. The Beatles are good, and and they were. And it, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have had them here. Thank you so very much, Bob Francis. You are a legend, and I thank you, and I wish you well in your retirement. Thank you, Barry. Okay. We're getting close to the end. Hi, Andrew. Oh, hi, Bobby. How are you going? Good. Yeah, look, I, I was um, just wanting to, uh, like a couple of others callers have, just congratulate you on... Um, a great career and um, getting the Beatles to Adelaide, as, as a few other callers have said, was a, a tremendous achievement. Um, and I actually called you up a few months ago when I'd seen Bruce Springsteen at Hanging Rock. and um, uh, You went and saw him appearing at Hanging Rock? I did, yeah. Fantastic. And it was absolutely fantastic. And I called you up and I suggested that you might be able to try and get him to... To Adelaide, but obviously times have changed and all that sort of thing. <laughs> you couldn't do that again today, mate. That no. was pure ass. <laughs> like, that uh, that people got up and, and started looking for signatures, and yeah. their signatures worked. It really, really is pure ass. It's um, uh, the the good thing though is that um, I mean, look, sometimes uh, I, I despair about the where music is at the moment, but um, someone like Bruce Springsteen is. Um, I believe carrying on the traditions of really good rock and roll music, as um, the Beatles sort of probably started a little bit in the 20th century. So, yeah. Well, thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much, Bobby. Nice to talk to you, mate. Bye. And I think, Coralie, you're going to be the lucky last, eh? Oh, thanks. That's good. <laughs> I just want to wish you all the best, Bob. Um, we've enjoyed listening to you every night when we've gone to bed, and I've just come from the Go Show Gold show, and enjoy it. Good, thank, yeah, I really did. It was really good. Who was, we were, I was, who I was, was the one best? that yelled out to you. Who was the best? Norm, Normie Rowe. Was he? Yeah. Yeah. You know, he, Normie he, Rowe. The bug is seventy years old, I think, and he's still, he's still got it, isn't he? He certainly has. Yeah. Yeah, he certainly has. It was really good. But I was one of the people that yelled out. Thanks, Bob, for everything. <laughs> good on you, <laughs> Yeah, it was really good. But Thank yeah, you, it's Charlie. really going to be bad to see you guys. Thank you, darling. Lovely talking to you. Thank you. Same to you. Bye. And thank you, everybody, tonight, folks. I've, I've written something down because I really don't know that I could say anything off the cuff because uh, I just fall apart, I think. Um, it, it's about it for me. After 57 years in radio, I'm done. I'm now nearly 75 years old, and really there is nothing more for me to do. I've had a wonderful career. There are no regrets. Sure, there might have been some times and some things that I would have done differently, but then it wouldn't have been me. But I reckon I've picked the right time to say goodbye. I've been in this industry now for nearly six decades. And when I started, television and portable radios didn't even exist. Public radio was turned off at midnight, and mobile phones had not been invented. But, you know... During the years and years in the entertainment industry, I was in the right place at the right time. And in many ways, I was lucky, and I can look back at my career and be pretty proud of it. Sure, some people will be pleased I'm gone, because I can be loud and abusive, angry even, and there have been many times when I've opened my mouth and my foot has fallen out. I've often been told my mouth is so big I could whisper in my own ear. But I've paid my price when I've overstepped the mark and I've been punished by the courts. But, you know, getting into hot water has never bothered me, really. At least it keeps you clean. But it could be a little... If I could be a little bit immodest for a moment, I figure I must have done good sometimes. I was reflecting on my career 
just a few days ago with some friends and was reminded I was the first to introduce talk radio to Australia and so helped create an entire new career for many people in radio, in particular South Australia. I was given full and official war correspondence status by the Australian, American and Vietnam government, won a television logie, was inducted into the Australian Radio Hall of Fame and was awarded an Order of Australia medal by the government. <clears throat> and, of course, I've hosted the number one nighttime... Oh, here we go. <laughs> ..the nighttime radio show for the past 200 years. <laughs> Somebody asked me recently how come you've survived so long in a notoriously fickle industry, and I reckon it's because I've been honest with people, brutally at times, and it's got me into some trouble. Some people mightn't believe this, but I would rather dance with life than wrestle with it. But sometimes you have to, well, be, be you and tell people to stop the bullshit. Not that retiring from public life is, will change that very much, and I suppose it's my use of insensitive, politically incorrect language that upsets some people, but I sometimes wonder what language the truck drivers are using now that everyone is using theirs and mine. So that's it, folks. Now most of my life belongs in the past, and it's time for me to say and to live the rest of my life with my beautiful wife, Anna. Good night, South Australia, and thanks for listening. Let me hope I put this. This is a special record for everybody. <laughs>